the terrain leads the dogs to the right a little bit. So I'm just going to throw the bird to the left. Um, now, I may be wrong. It's always a guess. You know, it's... All right. Go ahead. Am I looking at another throw? Okay, go ahead. Yes, that's what I want. That's... You... Yep, that's what I want. So that bird's really right outside those decoys. And I'd like to throw... I mean, it's great when you have wingers that the birds aren't close to the station that's launching of the person. So, if I get the wind right, and the reason I'm here is because it's a predicted northwest wind, which makes this relatively downwind. So if a dog gives into the factor and lets the terrain or lead him to an area that's easier to go, I want to make it Ideally, so he doesn't smell the bird. He's got a, it, it's going to result in a bigger hunt or may possibly a handle. Uh, so I designed this test to throw this bird to the left. The middle, the middle station will be thrown angle back to the right, which will be the first bird retrieved. I think what I'm going to, you're going to see the test dog do a delayed quad. In other words, so we'll throw left bird one, middle bird two. Pick up the middle bird. Then we're going to throw the mama pop as a double. There's going to be a mama pop off this right hand station. You pick that, those two up, and then you've got this bird on the left lap. Now, I'm going to always set up the most challenging version first. You don't feel you have to run it. You run it in the way that's appropriate for your dog. Uh, you could, you know, some people may need to do all singles. Some people may need to do a double and then a double. So we can, we can modify that accordingly, and I'll talk to each handler before they run. I'm going to suggest that you do something relatively challenging on our first test. I'd like to see you guys communicate on the line. I want to see how they watch the birds. I want to see um, what corrections you might make, what your standards are, and then, and I'm going to let, I'm going to comment and we'll have a dialogue, but I'm, I don't really want to dictate exactly what goes on. I want to get a little feel for what your style is and what, uh, and, and what your standards are. Um, so that's how this is going to go. So our, my plan is to do this, these four marks. And if four marks are too much, we can only throw one, we can throw one of the birds off the mama pop. Uh, then we're going to do a double bl lamp blind after this, and then we're going to move just between the stations where those decoys are there and do um, actually three marks would have a little bit of water in it maybe a water blind because today is going to be our best chance to do any sort of water of any description because now it's, temperatures drop and gets pretty raw so that's our plan I mean sometimes I plan more than I can get done in a day but we'll give it a shot but the plan is to do land quad double land blind and it would be essentially a whole test, because then we would do three, three marks that have some water and a water blind combined, probably. Now, if time doesn't allow it, I may abandon one of those things, but... I'm going to run a test dog as much as possible, just because I want to see the test. And I want you guys, I want to be able to talk about it, so the first handler can make a decision on what they want to do. And then I can talk about what I'm seeing, what I think, what a strategy might be if I was running this. And I want to include everybody in the, in the process of analyzing the test dog, because I think it's valuable. And I, I welcome questions uh, as much as you want. Nothing's off the table for me. And Carol knows me. She's, I mean, I'm not afraid to have a dialogue. And I, and I, you know, provocative discussions and challenging questions are fabulous. So I'll tell you what I think and why I'm doing what my reasons for managing things in the way I'm doing it. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on those kinds of things as well. We have to, when we have a larger crowd, we have to keep some, some degree of order. Uh, the handler has the floor. So the person who's running the dog gets to ask the questions. But when they're done, and maybe if we have any sort of a, a break where we're gonna talk about things a little bit, then I welcome people to raise their hand and have a question. Let's try to keep the questions pertinent to the test and the situation that we're dealing with. We will probably have a few, some Q&A time where um, 
um, where we can ask general questions. Okay, so, and, and a broken down test in the order that we're gonna do this is, is the most common scenario that, that, that I do in training. Probably 50% of the tests we do have some sort of a single, double, single, sing, two double co combination. Probably 25% of the time we do all singles and 25% of the time we may do is a, is a full blown multiple. So that's usually the ratio that, that we find most common. And I just, and I say that generally because that's, it's going to vary with obviously with what's going on with that individual dog and their success rates and their levels and so on and so forth. Today is probably the day that if your dog has weekend trial behavior issues, that they're going to be with the speaker and the gallery, they're going to, I mean, they're going to, if they, if, if they are typically unruly at a, at a, at a test, they're probably going to think they're at a test here. So take advantage of that and correct or deal with it accordingly. I want you to get the most out of it for you and your dog. And this, so if you have to pick the birds up, if you have to correct, if you have to do, you need to do what you need to do. And it'll be an opportunity to discuss ways to manage these kinds of things and ways I would, uh, I would do it myself. A number of folks have already talked about being a part of that uh, line mechanics course that, uh, that I did that we're going to relaunch in the fall again with some additional materials. It'll be fun. Um, so some of that, and you'll hear me say a lot of the things you've already heard about influencing, about healing mechanics, about watching birds, about sending style for the types of retrieves you were doing and all that kind of stuff. And you know, if you were part of that and you didn't totally understand some of that dialogue, that stuff's going to come up here, and I welcome, you know, I, I, the opportunity to try to, you know, expand upon that further. So we're going to have fun. Let's enjoy the beautiful day, morning we have. It may not last, but uh, we're, we're, we're going to work hard, and we're going to see some dogs work. So I'll keep mic'd up. No, nope, we got the chariot coming here. I got to get a picture of this. <laughs> I see that. That's how we bring dogs to life. Only the best. And you know, when you're in a holding one, I'm going to ask you to. Now, maybe everybody knows everybody, but if you don't, I, I don't think that's the case. Tell me where you're from. Tell me about your dog. Tell me about yourself. You know, a little bit about your experience. And like I said before, ask me. There's no stupid questions. You ask whatever you want to ask, as simple or as complex, and I'll do my best to honestly answer it. All right, we're going to look at the middle throw. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So it's the morning time and we've got the winds a little bit unpredictable here. It's a little coming a little bit out of the northeast. Um, Mama Papa, I'll tell you some of my rules on things like this. I'll, I make sure that I'm in a situation where, now the nice thing here with these wingers is the birds are well separated. So if you're hand throwing them I and mean, you don't have big throws, sometimes they can get kind of messy. In other words, I don't want them, what, I, what I'm going to avoid at all costs is a situation where they can smell the mama bird while hunting the papa bird. I don't like that. I'm, I'm going to work hard not to let that happen. So the, the first bird retrieved will be the bird prone to the right. So it'll go one, two when we do that. So I wouldn't do that in a situation where a dog, now I'm not saying a dog can't hunt near the holding line and get deep and then wander over in the other bird or attempt to, but I don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid throwing mama papas in situations where 
you've got some sort of a crosswind where a dog could win one bird while hunting another. And I'll do that, I, I work hard to make that the case on any test. So it's left bird one, middle bird two. Pick up the middle bird, come back, throw the mama papa, and then complete the test. Now, I'm sure this is gonna vary from dog to dog, but this is, uh, Danielle's gonna run Link. He's about a four-year-old qual QA2, qualified all-age dog, who's, you know, probably at high master level, I would say, probably, what I would consider that dog. What this will resemble would be what a normal four days of training might look like for, for like our day school, for example. Or a lot of times this oftentimes looks like what a pre-national training offer, opportunity would look like because the numbers are pretty similar. And whether you're preparing for a master national or a master amateur or an amateur national amateur or something like that, obviously the, the, the style of tests are gonna be um, different depending on whether it's a field trial or hunt test. But the flow and the nature, and I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing in the sequence that I'm doing it. Today things will be, I work pretty hard to have a theme build upon itself within a test and throughout, you know, a course of days, instead of just having random stuff. Sometimes that's going to be the case. Okay, so we have Danielle running test dog. You ready? And this is Link. Yeah. Link is, tell me about Link. Now, hold on a second. I'll call you the line. Link is... Yes. Yes, Jake. So what we're going to do, Jake, is the left-hand station is going to be one. Rick will be two. And you can just... Uh, you can actually, I mean, are you guys, is that how you're, you're going to stand up like that when you launch? Is that correct? Doesn't matter to me. We can sit down or stand up, whatever works for you. No, I say stand. Uh, one thing I like about you standing up when we do this double is there is a head swing factor here because you're the closest station. So, um, you know, whether you're in a white jacket or in a big boxy holding blind, it's pretty obvious that's a gun station. So. Watching the birds and, and not head swinging is a big part of the of the fundamentals of, of this. So when we shoot left hand bird one, middle bird two, a lot of dogs are going to anticipate a bird coming out of this right hand station, which they're not going to get. We're going to so um, then you get the opportunity to do that. So it's going to be left winger one, Rick will be number two. Okay. And we got a test dog coming the line. All right, test dog the line. Link I think is four ish. He's got four master passes, and then I took him to the trials, and he's QA2. Did you hear that? Dog yeah. has four master passes, and uh, he's, he's QA2. What? Yeah. Uh, left, did you say? Left? Four left, yeah. Okay. Okay, Jake, get ready. This will be Jake one, Jake two. I want you guys to do the signaling alpha because I want you to manage 
how long you want to have your dog watch the bird. Okay. I'll talk a little bit about what I like to do. Bird in mouth? Or? You could do it either way, but I probably wouldn't here. Let's do it. You hand me the bird if you want. You want me to throw both of them, correct? Yeah, I'll signal two times. First time I signal, you throw the mama bird. Second time I signal, you throw the other one. There'll be a delay. Got it. Good thing we threw uh, test out. Now you got two memory birds, right? You got the mama bird, and you got the left hand bird. Is there any way to make a report on the left hand bird? Uh, the, the, can you put a blank in the. Uh, yeah. I do have some farmers if you don't have it. Yeah, I but I think we should have a shot on that. That would be ideal. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought it went more towards the Pretty flat, maybe slightly angle back. Because they've been corrected for it. do it as a full-blown quad, you could do that as well. I mean, you could throw, you know, how would you do that? I suppose you could throw left-hand bird one, mama, papa two, middle bird three, uh, four, three it would be the, the fourth bird, but, but let's see how it goes. So that's our test bird, and that's our test. So why don't we start getting our dogs ready? I think we're going to run blank out to the, so we get a report on the first bird shot. And, uh, if you want to come up and look at the line, sit. feel free. What test am I going to do? What you're thinking about? All right, how am I going to come out of the blind? Which, you know, because you're not going to point out all the stations, you're going to let them scan, and you're and you're going to point you're going to point them in the, in the direction of the first bird that's going to be shot. One, two. You're going to think about your order of pickup. Now, sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not so obvious. What do you think you're gonna do? A lot of times my dog makes the choice for me. She tends to go for the shortest bird first. Okay. And I ordinarily No matter where the flyer is? No matter where the flyer is. She okay. tends to so ordinarily I don't fuss too much unless it's I'm working on selection. Okay. Let me give you one other idea, guys. If you had a really bad hit swinger. That left hand bird done as a single first with all these other anticipated stations would be a good long, and I call that, in our world we call that long single first. We do that a lot because one of the 
chronic problems in all these retriever sports and marks is head sweat. It's the anticipation of something else happening and not concentrating on what's being thrown. So, um, because that bird is thrown out of the test, one other way I might do this test would be a single on the left bird and then a triple on the right hand station. That'd be a great way to do this. And I would probably throw mama one, middle bird two, papa three. That'd be another good way to do this test. It'd be a good challenging way to do it. It'd be a good training way. So, I'll, I'll throw that out there for you. So don't just, I, I encourage you to do what's appropriate for your dog. And I encourage you to, you know, do something relatively challenging. So, I'd like to do that. I think that's a good way to do it. The more I look at this, the more I think, yeah, I like that. So uh, I think, are we shuttling somebody back out? Okay, I got you. Okay, great. There's a, probably one of the best handlers, most competitive that I've been around is uh, Laura Perrin. Laura, they, they actually started some of their earliest wingers. There was the Tangelo Tosser, and then there was the uh, Luciana Stronger, was one of the original ones. The Luciana is, is, Laura, is John and Laura Perrin, and they and they're one of the only couples that have both won Open National Championships. Oh, wow. And Laura is one of the only four, three women in the history of the game that have won an Open National. But Laura, that I always laugh, will have two people. She hired me for a private, and her and one other, and we use a speaker. Because she wants all the bells and whistles and noises and that kind of stuff. And we put up tents with, and chairs when there's not even people. And, yeah. you know, she... And Here. There's, it's smart. It's smart to create the atmosphere as much as possible that you compete in. The excitement level. So we talk about line mechanics and line manners and all that stuff. Well, it's hard to sometimes create the excitement and energy that something like this creates but by doing some of those things and putting extra holding blinds up and, you know, and using a marshal and calling a line and, and we'll shoot shots and you know, do all kinds of stuff to simulate as if other dogs are running. So, this made me think of that. Here. Okay. Here. What is the name of our new gun station thrower? Bill. Okay, so we got Bill, Jake, and, oh, Jake, is Jake in the middle now? Okay. Here. Okay, you switched <laughs> up on me. And Rick's doing Mama Papa. Okay. So what we're going to do here and I, uh, I'll share with you a little bit of the dialogue. I'll try to punch the radio when I'm talking. Is uh, one thing that came to mind that I thought was a really good way to do this is to throw Bill as a single first, a long, and I call it a long single first because um, it's it's the longest bird of the test. And the reason I'm going to do that is the other two stations are going to stand just like they are now, and it's going to create a head swinging uh, challenge. Yeah. And because that bird is thrown kind of against the grain and out of the test, the dog may tend to head swing. And, um, and then you're going to make him pick that bird up first. And if it were me, I'd make, I would not let the dog roll in and fade behind the holding blind here. I would have a high standard about that single first because when you add discipline to that particular retrieve, it adds structure and it emphasizes, because head swinging isn't the problem. Head swing is, you know, is only the symptom of the problem, and the problem is a lack of concentration. So the other thing that happens with lack of concentration, they're more susceptible to fading with factors. So if, they, if their anticipation goes from the left hand bird to the other station, and you and and you make them pick up the left bird first, the they may roll, they may fade to the right, they may go to the middle station, they may go between the two holding blinds, and I would treat that. And I would probably handle or I would know them and recall them and re-throw that and make them concentrate and make them do that bird right and then go on to the rest of the test. We do long single first at least two to three times a week. And it would be a very common scenario that we would do the day before an event. Almost always we have a long concentration single first 
then we do maybe a double and then a blind. I mean, that is our Thursday before Friday field trial regimen. And that's very common. And it's really solid because you work on concentration, you work on marking, you work on control and teamwork. So it's a really good way to do it. So I think that's what our first dog's going to be. Yeah. So tell me about our first dog. Ginger is two, almost three. She has an upland a new upland title, and she's through senior, she's through seasoned. She's got a couple of finished passes, and we're hoping to do master by the end of the summer. Okay, so this is a fairly challenging test for you, I yeah. think. So after we do the single first, what is, then we're gonna do the triple? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do a single on Bill. Single on Bill. Okay, Bill, get ready. You're welcome to stand up or whatever is the easiest way for you to manage this. Okay, let's have our dog number one to line. Heel. Heel. Heel back. Oh, I don't have to. Heel. Let me, um, hold on just a second. I have a question. Um, Bill, are you manually launching this or am I doing it with the remote? Uh, you don't have a radio. He said you could uh, launch it yourself or he can launch it, whatever you want, whatever you prefer. Why don't we have him launch it? I'll I'll signal and he if he if, if he knows how to do that. But we should probably at some point get a radio to him unless in case we need him to help or do communicate with him. Because I like to Yeah. Okay, let's have dog number one. If you guys correct for anything, tell me what you did, because sometimes it's not obvious. <clears throat> now, if you stick them or swat them, I can see that. But if you correct with the collar, let me know. Can you signal when you're ready? One hundred. Okay, now we're gonna do a triple. Rick, Mama Bird one. Jake, two. Rick, Papa Bird number three. So, memorizing, memorizing the order is something you gotta do. I mean, because you get this complicated scenario and you're all excited, it's easy to forget what the order is. So, a couple of the really good handlers. This guy may run five dogs. Ken Neal's the thing. He's gonna ask the judge the order every time. It's just his routine that helps him kind of cement in his mind what's gonna go on. Middle, no, mama one. Middle bird two, papa three. So remember, mama is the bird thrown into the set. Fourteen. So this dog elected to do what we, I would call primary select now. Typically, selection is something the handler decides more than the dog. But uh, you did say it's very common for her to. So what's your anticipation on bird you're gonna get next? 
So she said, why well, never? Commitment. So you use your hand on memory bird, but not on go bird? I didn't realize that. I guess. Okay, I just noticed it. And I'll ask questions like that. Okay. So can I ask you a couple questions? I mean, she's she's got she's got a little bit of. I noticed her playing with the birds a little bit. Is this something she would do on normal training, or is this what she would do because she's excited and she thinks she's at a hotel? Um, she plays a little bit. Okay. Does it ever result in chewing on the bird, or is it just okay? Oh. Um, you know what you guys ought to do? You ought to honor. Yeah, I'd like that. So why don't you just step right over here? Uh, there's some. See those two dandelions right over there? That's that would be a perfect place to honor. Mm -hmm. Should have had Danielle do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to excuse you uh, when the dog sent. Hi. Hi. And what's your name? I'm Linda. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm down from Newark, Ohio. Newark, Ohio. Okay. I've been, I'm going to say, attempting to play this game for probably 17, 18 years. Oh, excellent. Okay. I'm an AKC judge for all three levels. All right. Um, I have Tycho. This is my husband's dog, but I, since I'm retired, I train him during the day. He's a weekend trainer, and he, he's been running him to get his title. Okay. He's got, Tycho's, how old is Tycho? He's five. He's okay. got four master passes, master so we only got one more to go. Our plans for him are to, after he gets his master title, is we hope to do some Upland uh, titles and nice. some HRC titles. And I'd like to, we'd like to get him into owner handler cues. Oh, when he was uh, about a year, year and a half, he got second place in a derby at our um, oh, nice. Flat Coat National Specialty. Oh, excellent. So okay. we hope, we so hope he has potential. I'm trying to think who I just, I worked with before she's from. Um, uh, uh, Margot Brown. You know Margot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know of her. Right? Yeah, she and she just had a coats. very nice flat coat. And I'm trying to remember, I think the, the co owner's from somewhere in Illinois, but this right. worked with us at day school. And okay. I don't remember the dog's name right offhand, but I was very impressed with her. Yeah. Yep. She so does do you know a lot who of field the one champion. amateur field champion flat coat was? I do not, but I saw that. I had a friend that was down there photog photographing well, it. Well, this was uh, uh, Eleanor Burtz was the owner. Okay. She was from Augusta, Georgia. Okay. And the dog's name was Atari. Oh, okay. This was uh, quite a few years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking Amateur of the Grand. There was a flat coat that just passed the Grand, too. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Atari. Atari's in my second flat coat that I had's bloodline. Okay, we're going to run radios out there. What do you want to do here? Um... <clears throat> So I'm, I'm a little confused because when I went to get him, I had embedded in my head the other, right, the and other, I a, I, and you I threw a monkey, this. and I'm getting old, so you're going to okay, have well, to remind me the order. <laughs> well, the order is what you want it to be. Okay. Okay, but I'm going to give you some options, and, okay. and what I said to our first handler is, is uh, doing that single first yes. on the left bird is a good long mm -hmm. single first concentration kind of yes. bird. Uh, if you've got a dog that likes to head swing or anticipate more throws, Doing a single at the longest station with the other stations obvious okay. is good training. Okay, that's good. So I we'll said, do that. Well, 
a single and then a triple is a, is mm -hmm. and when we threw the we threw the single on the left bird, picked right. it up. Then we threw mama bird one, middle bird two, papa bird three. Okay, the so the gold bird was, would be there. Okay. The gold bird was the right hand bird. And I said that's you yep. know, don't get married to that, but I felt that that was kind of a nice order. That's good. Uh, I'll that do it. Be done. I'll and take again, it. There's, there's options from doing a double and then a double. You could do, you know, there's a lot of different variations. Right. So I hope people choose different yeah. things just so we can decide what we like yeah. the best. Yeah. Nope. That that sounds good to me. So you're he, gonna do the single first and then the triple. Yeah, that's good. He does. I will say he does do a little bit every once in a while. We've tried to train him and correct him, but he tries to do sometimes his own selection. He'll own selection. he'll lie to us. He'll look that he, way does and he then do he'll do that on the on the go bird or, or another bird. He will do it on whatever bird he feels you know, he likes the best it, yeah. and we in training we correct him at a test we don't right. okay. <laughs> but what she said is this dog sometimes decides to you know you point at one bird and he'll decide to go to a different bird. right after he goes he'll lie to you he'll line up look like he's going to oh. like he's yeah okay i'm there yeah, and then he'll take a few steps and boom he'll go right to where he wants to go so he usually gets corrected and then has to re and then redo it that mm -hmm. do you make him in training get the bird that you sent Right. For. Lately, he's been pretty good about that, but at the last test he was at, his first series, he pulled his little stunt, now, but he passed. Now, <laughs> I'll just comment. Let me just clarify mm -hmm. what selection is. There's primary selection and secondary selection. There, there are really two forms of selection. But what really what it is, is when the handler dictates the order in which the birds are going to be retrieved. In a primary selection scenario, the hand, uh, you select a bird other than the last bird down to pick up. That's it. You select off the first bird retrieved. In secondary selection, the handler is going to dictate what this, you typically pick up the, the go bird, the last bird down, and then you dictate the second bird retrieved. It'll be a great discussion on why would you select. Sometimes it's just a better way, a more successful way to do the test. Some reasons you select are to have more control in the team. That the handler, especially with a dog that's high powered and it has a tendency maybe to be out of control, adding structure and discipline to the order in which you pick things up, sometimes can manage line manners and high powered dogs in a better way. And so sometimes your, your effort to select isn't necessarily just to pick up the birds cleaner, it may be just to make a statement that hey, you may think you're in charge, buddy, but I'm actually calling the shots. So that's, and so when to select, when not to select, whether you select, it's one of those great debates and questions, and there's not a right or wrong answer to that. There really isn't. Uh, so yeah. when I first got in this, there was a real common way to, to primary select. And primary select typically is you've got, and when you primary select off of a live shot flyer, it takes more control. Because the dog is, most dogs are going to say, hey, that's the flyer, and it's the last bird down, and I'm ready to go. And you say, no, you're not going to get that. You're going to get this. It can, it can be very challenging. Now, a judge is not going to dictate the order that you have to pick up the marks in. So it doesn't matter what order you pick them up in. But uh, it may matter to you and, and your training program. So one last thing, just so you know. This is primarily my husband's dog because I had lost my flat coat. Okay. So um, I train him, like I said, train him during the day, and my husband does the weekend and does the test with him. So he has to learn, and our styles are totally different. Um, we try to keep them the same, but they're not. So his behaviors sometimes are different for the different ones. Right. But, so she said that. So he may or may not run real well for me and just. Okay. Yeah. I think it's great the dogs get. Yeah. We're trying to get him so he'll. Go. That he'll transfer from. Right, because I figure it makes a better trained dog if he can run for oh, different absolutely. people. So. Absolutely. Well, that's, okay. that's all good stuff. Everything Sit. you're saying makes sense. Sit. Okay, Bill, we're going to do the same thing we did with the last dog, a single on Bill first. And I love the fact that Jake is standing because it creates a little bit of a... So we're going to do Sit. the same test, a single Sit. and then that triple. Is this... Okay, here we go. First dog coming on. Sit. We were discussing Pat. selection. I think this is her. She may need it. Okay. Is that yours? Okay. Is that yours? Dog number two to line. Sit. Here. Here. Sit. 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 
Yeah. Like I said, you, I want you guys to do the signaling. I'll, I'll help with the... Yeah. She had her left leg rear, not square. So if she's influencing to the left, she'd have been better off with her left leg square. I'm a, I'm a big believer in having my both feet pointed in the direction of the destination. And the other thing, by having her left foot back, she opened the window to the distraction to go to the right. So she didn't really help her cause very much there, I think. So she had a bit of a hunt there, but she got it, and that's fine. I have a lot of bad habits like that. My, myself, my line manners are horrible. And okay. I need somebody to get to Right, and I'll start to point this stuff out. I, I'll Thanks make so. comments as we go. Okay, there'll be Rick 1, Jake 2, Rick 3. So it's Mama 1, left middle bird 2, Papa 3. I mean, I'm, would, it have, would that be a switch? I mean, I guess it would be in question. I, I mean, probably should stop now after the fact. Right, I, I think I should stop. Sometimes it's plan B. So yeah. He went outside and he just went all the way to the back of the woods. I, what I would consider it is not a great mark, probably. But it could be hard to go back in there and get that bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in a test or in a trial, once you handle, you handle to the bird. I usually handle for the lesson in training. In other words, he was, going, he was essentially going back to the middle bird. So that was the lesson. Don't go back to the bird you just got. Now, the challenge is, because he went to the middle bird in such an odd route, did he really know what bird he got? I don't know the answer to that. But, 
probably some confusion. This is going to be challenging very much, I would think. Now, feel free if you want me to have the gun stand up and make some motion to do that, because we are trained. watching, he definitely looked back at the middle bird after that bird. So, it brings up a good point, because I'm a big believer in you watching, especially on dead birds. You've already seen where these birds are going. You may want to glance up, but you want to spend the majority of your attention watching your dog watch the birds. And if you get mesmerized with watching the bird, and something like that occurs, you're not aware of it, because you're not watching your dog. I, I, I said 80-20 rule. 80% of my attention needs to be on the dog. So if that happened on an event, what are you going to do? Are you, I would, you'd have been better off at that point if you didn't see the right bird and looked at the middle bird to step up and send him for the bird you think he's going to end up getting. Or, but you need to at least have the information about what he, what you, because what he sees is more important than what you see. So that would be, a comment. Carol's got a good view. I was watching from here. She thinks he never really, and he's a little hard to tell because he. Most of the right, then he back to the left, and I was watching the dog, so I'm not sure where the Right, right. And I, he definitely looked back left, and I didn't know if that was like, I didn't see it, or his tendency to start, to, to choose to do something other than what, she, because she did comment that that was a real common scenario. And, and, so. and usually, if he selects, he'll be decides to go where he's got his mind, he's going to go, he'll do a It'll happen between here. 15 feet. 15 feet. Boom. Boom. He's going to do a quick angle okay. and tear off. So, okay. You know, uh, I don't know how many of you guys are note takers, but these are good things to keep track of, you know. Identify, you know, I, in that course I talked about how we would take notes, so I would roughly diagram the test. I need to identify the order in which I threw the test. And I want to pay attention to what happened. I'd say he lined outside the, the go bird and got the middle bird, was going to return back to the go bird, had to handle on that, and was totally confused on the right bird, so we had to help. You know, that'd be the things that I, you know, so if I look back on my notes and, wow, the last triple I did, I essentially didn't do any of the three birds very well. Maybe I need to kind of do some simpler tests, or, or at least you can, you can trace what your success rates are and what the patterns are. So I think note-taking is ideal. Hi. Hi, I'm Ann. Hi, Ann. I have Spock. Spock is six. He's a master. Um, Six-year-old master hunter. Yes, he's my fourth master that I've trained to myself. Oh, excellent. So. And Ann, where are you from? Ohio. No, Ohio. I live in Ohio now. <laughs> what part of Ohio? Um, outside of Cleveland. OK. Yeah. It was a big dog area. Uh, yeah. Years, a uh, big retrieve, uh, Buckeye Retriever Club. Yep. Uh, Jim Weitzel was the pro from uh, Northeast Ohio, and I had clients and, and right. uh, the Kittredges, and yep. you know, a lot, lot of history there. Yep, lots and lots oh, of excellent. opportunities. Excellent, great country. So, what do you want to do? Uh, what I'd like to do with him is throw it as the delayed sit. Throw it as the delayed quad, okay. but when I go back to pick up the first bird down, I'd like to have that rethrown without noise, just yeah. rethrown. 
That got nicknamed in my word um, an Alberta uh, triple. And that was a, where you throw the full blown test and you re-throw the creep keeper prior to the yes. um, And I don't remember the gentleman's name, but there was some uh, really competitive field thrower from Alberta, Canada. That had really good marking dogs and it was a routine he did. So it got that nickname, at least in my world. So if I say I did a triple with an Alberta, that means I'm going to rethrow typically the last bird to be retrieved again prior to sending. So he, I will have to explain to Bill to reload. His reload bird. when we're picking up the mom. Okay, up so I get a little twist here. Bill, we're going to do the. Uh, Rethrowing it, which is going to be uh, for so this particular dog. Okay. I've been working on Bill, some compl more complicated things with him, and so he's not. Sometimes, if he essentially okay, thinks he's been knowed off a bird, which is kind of what throwing that's like, when he's breaking down, he'll mark it, but he breaks down because he's not sure he was supposed to go there. This is to let him know I really do want you to go all the way out there. Yeah. Okay, Bill. So all you gotta do Sit. is have one bird loaded, Point. you'll be number one, Jake will be number two. While the dog is retrieving the middle bird, restring your winger and put another bird in it, okay? And I'll tell you when to relaunch it, okay? Wave if you comprehended that. Thank you, Bill one, Jake two. And then after that, throw the mama papa, and then- And then you throw the left bird yep, before you say, exactly. okay, we'll yep. Sit. All right, great way to do it. Sit. Something I do all the time. Okay, let's have dog number three alive. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. Right only or two sided? Two sided. Okay. Back in the blind, please. Okay, go go ahead and restring. We're going to redo it. Here. Here. No birds are good to have you. I saw it. He's going to pick it up. Please. Oh. No, no, you're good. Go back to the hole. Okay. So Bill, go ahead and restring. Come and, here. And, and, and redo it. Sit. Probably Sit. pulled it back but forgot to pull the cords down. Sit. 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 Sally Kepke, do you know Sally? Uh, no, I don't think so. so. Not. Yeah. Sit. Quiet. She was she was trial secretary for Buckeye Retriever Club for many years. So where I go in the wintertime is the Thomasville, Georgia area. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge Cleveland connection to Thomasville. Um, in the whole plantation world. And I if you go and take tours of some of the plantations, you see that for whatever reason that part of, huh. of Georgia. Uh, and I think it was in tuberculosis time, had a huge Cleveland migration uh, to South Georgia. Who knew? A lot of the pointer and, dog and uh, the trigger people are family in Cleveland. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, sit, relax. Sit. Yeah. Sometimes we throw no birds intentionally just to get practice of leaving the line and coming back. Okay. 
figured it out. Okay, Rick, get ready. Mama one, Papa two. Sit. Sit. Thank you. It's not happening by design, but the sh but the the shot and then the delay before the throw is actually a technique that I see Andy Atar use a lot to get dogs to not hit swing. Changing the routine and the pattern. They'll shoot and count to five and then throw. Just to kind of keep the dogs focused on a certain spot. Here. It's kind of happening by accident here, but I don't mind it. Okay. You know, the strategy of quads and they complicated tests. Sometimes it's not as important to know where you're going as it is to know where you've been. And that's what hurt the last of you. He went for one bird, ended up at another, and really didn't have a I don't think had a clue what he'd brought over the tree. So, kind of a multiple choice question. If you just know where you've been and you don't go back to where you've been, you've eliminated the options, right? So, been there, been there, like, well, there's no, as long as you have a, you're, you're good about not returning to the old fall, you don't necessarily have to always be real obvious about where you're going, but you'll just, be smart about it. Thank you for helping. Sure. I'm closer to the action, I can see what's going on. Oh yeah, for sure. I like to do that at master test and stuff. Well, we've not even been to a junior test yet, so. Well, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to tell me what floor all nice you job. want. The wind is coming Appreciate down. your help. More out of the Northwest more ideal for the test. Okay, Bill, are you restrung and ready to go? You're not going to shoot this time. You're just going to launch. So if you can peek over or see me, I'll take good. Thank you. But you just nod your head. So when I do an Alberta, I go through the mechanics of, as if I'm not going to re-throw. So I want you to come in, heel. Get them. Get his butt around and make him heel. And, and, yep. And step forward a little bit is what I would do, and I just go through my routine. You like, yep. You get this. Just about the time you're going to put your hand down to send, we're going to throw. Perfect. Go ahead, Bill, launch it. And then you send on your own time. Okay. I don't treat it as a triple and a single. I treat it as just about the time I would drop my hand in and send is when the bird comes up. That's the way I do the Alberta. Very nice. Okay. There you go. Good job, little man. Okay. You're welcome to receive on the honor box. So okay. We're clipping. How are you? I am good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new training partner here, so. Okay. Like, is this the puppy that I'd seen? This well, this is the one I came up in August or September up there. Okay. We had a little trouble with the water. Um, okay. but not how old now? He's two. And what's his name? Tycho. Tycho, that's right. Yeah. And then I have a one year old too. Oh. I, I, long story. <laughs> You're keeping yourself busy. Uh, too Tell much. me what you think is yeah. best for you and Tycho here. I think a double double. So you're gonna do do two, pick it up, then do two more? Yeah. Or you're not going to do a delayed quad. Two doubles. Right. And I would call that, if I want to say back to, that's like back to back, back, to back double. doubles. You're doing a double here, picking those two up, doing a double on the right. That's what I think I should yeah, do. Yeah, that's, that's really solid. And for a two-year-old dog, that's very appropriate. Yes, okay. you've got. We're going to do two doubles. It's going to be Bill one, Jake two. We're going to pick up both those birds, and then we'll do a double with Rick one, Rick two. So Rick, you can just sit down. And it'll be Bill 1, Jake 2. This is Tycho, two-year-old Tycho coming hey, up. Pat, is that Jake? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, Jake is the middle bird. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jake uh, switched around. So we're doing 
first, second. I think we do one, two. Okay. That's the way I would do it. But if you no, want to change fine. it. No, that's fine. So let's throw left bird one, middle bird two. Okay. And that's exactly what you need to do. If there's any confusion, you don't know what the instructions are. If there's any uncertainty, you need to ask. Did you guys see, if you're in that course, you, I've got one client that will have this little, you ever see what the quarterbacks have, the little deal on their sleeve, and they'll diagram the test for themselves. Or if they have, remember to like take your time, or if they have little, good thing to do. If you don't want to get up there and make a mistake, you pay too much money to, to do this. If I want to close the door off to the temptation to head swing, I'd be a little bit further forward on that door. I'd, I'd say, just like she did, right there. She just closed the door. In other words, she influenced to the left. Did a nice job of that. Now she'll open the door. Time to look to the right. Perfectly done. Number 12. Okay. Hundred dogs excused. Thank you. Anything you can do to help your dog see the birds better? Is a handbook is a good thing to do. Doubles are just, just perfect for him. That's it. I, I, I'm really consistent about it. Just get good three bullets. I just step up a little bit. Too. There you go. There you go. Right at the bird. That last little move you made really pointed him right at the bird. pushing and pulling, but she said she had trouble on test. So it'll be Mama one, Papa two, Rick. you guys to, to use the mechanics that she just used all the time. Because it's the only non it's the only communication you can legally do with your dog. Well after you signal the judge and before you get your number. And once you really condition them, it's just like talking to them without talking to them. Yeah. It's just look right, look left, something's about to happen. Long flat throw, you know, they get outside of it and inside of it, get a little bit deep and they never work their way back and figure it out. <laughs> and I'll 
way if one of these was applied, you would want to glance up and make sure you saw where it was in case you had to handle to it. Or... Identify the gun station or the place the bird came from and then influence out to the bird. So if I thought he wanted to go left, I'd come back and point him somewhere. Usually the sweet spot is between the gun and the bird. That, that is what dogs can kind of make sense of. I only have one bird. Okay, well, we'll do a re-bird right now. Okay. When I'm doing the drill. Uh-huh. Hello. Hello. This is, this is Wilson. He's five. And Wilson? Yes. Okay. His real name's Great Way, like Castaway, but he's a Wilson. Okay. I gotcha. Oh, from so, Castaway. Yeah. So um, he's a master hunter, just barely. Five-year-old master yeah. hunter. And then he went, he's a hunting dog now. Okay. So when's a, and, and he, what does he hunt? Waterfall? Upland? Yeah. Or? Uh, upland too. Okay. He does both. Excellent. And uh, when did he get his master hunt? Last summer. Okay. So does that mean he's not going to do any more hunt tests at all? Right. <laughs> okay. Is it, that... it was work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So why was it, what were his challenges? Because you, you're giving me information. That... Um, he's happy. <laughs> okay. He's so what do you, well, what's he, the, I like happy. He's good. very happy. Does happy mean that he's undisciplined? No. He's just, doesn't like to wait and like to get to, like this. You get okay. right back in there. Five-year-old Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Step. You wait. So I have to always ask, you know, are you familiar with anything about field trials at all? Not much. So um, for many, many, many years, Stay. the highest pointed derby dog in AKC history was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever female. Was that Chaitan's Blizzard? A dog named Meg's Patio Oh, Ward. Meg's Patio Okay. So, so I always get the Chessy people because I said, all right, who, prior to Candlewood's Tanks a Lot, who won three nationals, who was the highest point of Derby dog for 30 years? The people yeah. So it met, was a, was a uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever bitch named Meg's Patio Ward. I never okay. saw her, but she was before my time. Okay. So, I started in 1980, so that was a long time ago, right? Probably in the 60s. Right. Okay. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna do the long bird as a single, and then do the triple. Okay. And I'm not too sure I might want the middle bird as the go bird, so he do, he gets big. So the middle bird meaning the bama bird? Yeah. So, okay, Back that would up. be fine. So let's, just, let's make sure I understand if you, okay. So if we, would we go this bird one, papa two, mama three? Is that yeah. what you would do? Okay. Uh, we're gonna do a single on Bill. And then when Set. we do the triple, it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be Set. Jake one, papa two, mama three. Okay, so when we do the triple, but it's gonna be a single first on Bill. Okay, here we go. So we're clipping Wait. along pretty good here. Back up. Here. Sit. Wait. the most famous Chesapeake ever. Probably yeah. Baron's Tuli Tiger was one of the most famous ones. It's in Fort Illustrated. Yeah. That's the National Open Championship. I had a daughter of Rudy. Oh, okay. Rudy was up uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
part of a Jesse Big Bits that named Jesse gets in the Retriever Hall of Fame. Twenty-six. Probably one of the best marking dogs and one of the best natural water dogs I've ever had was a Chesapeake name. CC Diamond Dex in Michigan. He was a man of steel championship. Had 40 some derby points. He was just a wild Indian. Small. Very athletic. Okay, so it will be uh, Jake one, Rick on the Papa Bird two, then Rick on the Mama Bird three. And that's a way to make this test a little simpler. But I would think it would be. Now, if I was going to do a simpler version of this triple, that would probably be it. By making the, the mama bird the go bird, I guess is it. seem overly exuberant or crazy or you know I mean just look <clears throat> it's I mean style is uh, watching a dog that's having fun doing what he's doing good thing well he's two-sided well, that oh, would be yeah. that would certainly be a bird you would probably run off the right thing so much more at the bird because there's a lot of advantages with two-sided dogs. Being able to step forward and back, most of the advantages on two-sided dogs is in watching the test. Because if you, especially when you have a close flyer, like if you have a left-sided only dog and there's a close flyer here and they've got to concentrate on something less obvious, it's hard to do that. You can watch them off the right. You can use your body to influence and, and to help you see the birds. 
But it's not essential. There's, I've run them both ways, and there's lots of dogs that are really good on both sides, or on just on one side. But uh, uh, it's more common today to have dogs that are two-sided dealers, because there are some opportunities. Working the box, influencing right or left, it's easier to push than pull. So if you're influencing to the right, you typically would run off the right. That's the theory behind that. So. Hello. Hello. What do we have here? Um, we have Ruby. Ruby? Mm-hmm. And Ruby's how old? She is three. Three-year-old Ruby? Mm-hmm. Just and beginning into master. Okay, she's just starting master. Just starting master. Is where so what at. are we going to do with Ruby here? Well, I would like to do with that long single bird. Okay. And then if we could set up a nice little triple for her. So do you want to do a, a simpler version like maybe we just did? Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, so that would be good. by making them the mama bird, the bird thrown to the left as the go bird, I think that yeah. if you're doing something that has a mm -hmm. little higher likelihood of success yeah. for a dog just starting triples, okay. that would probably be the version I would choose. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do single um, on the, the single bird. and then which? There would, that, the order then would be uh, the middle station throw to the right, that'd yeah. be one, papa two, and mama three. Gotcha. Papa thrown to the right, mama thrown to the left. <clears throat> Single on Bill. We're going to do the same thing we just did. Heel. So a single Heel. on Bill, Heel. and then the triple Heel. with Jake one, Papa two, Mama Sit. three. Okay. Sit. We have three-year-old Ruby coming up. Sit. Starting master level. Sit. Heel. Heel. Sit. Heel. I'm trying a couple of. Ruby, I've been around a couple of Ruby Goldens, and she looks like all of you. <laughs> Go for speed. Yeah. Sit. Sit. No. Leave it. Fourteen. Triple would be the left bird one, right bird two, middle bird three. So it's okay. Guns up. It's Jake one, Papa two, Mama three. Ruby's got a hair trick. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, you see it more in, in hunt test handlers that don't use the hand on the go bird, but using the hand on the go bird is a steadying factor. It's a it's a sequence of events that lead up to being sent. So, and the dogs that don't get a hand, they're like waiting for the first word that comes out of somebody's mouth. It doesn't have to be the handler. They're just ready to. So if I was, I, I would encourage somebody to, you know, drop their hand in a dog like this because she's going to likely breaking is going to be a concern. Really? I think she looks like when that shot goes, she's about ready to get after it. Okay, that's a little bit left of the station now. The challenge here may be not to go back. So, 
she, I wouldn't have handled it. I mean, she what, what do you think she was going to switch to? I'd like to use that. The left of the deer. Well, you know, uh, some people always handle if they go behind the gun station. There's got to be a factor or something that I can identify, like a, a cheat of some sort. Stay with the wind, cheat water, terrain. That would prompt me. When a dog just goes straight as an arrow, that, that may have something to do with where she was pointing. She found one bird no. with decoy, she says, uh, she thinks they're all in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, we're you receiving the honor box. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm well, and yourself? I'm okay, thanks. Okay, tell me about your dog. Um, this is Gamble, and he's going to be eight. Gamble. Gamble. Okay. And um, I have a senior hunter. Okay. But I'd like to clean it up. Um, I don't know if I'll probably not make it to master due to holes in other places. Okay. But I'd like to clean up his senior so that I can do HR and maybe run a senior test for Okay. What do you kicks. think is appropriate to do here? I was going to ask you for your thoughts, but I thought maybe double double. Yeah, what Christy did with the doubles. Yes, sir. Doubles was probably a, that a might really be good. nice, solid way to do with those at that level, I would As, think. And he doesn't often, I don't, can't tell you the last time he saw a mama papa. So Sometimes that gets more in our head than the dogs. But yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, nurse it. we'll work through it. All right, yeah, I just don't want to end up in a handle situation. Okay, so um, if you have trouble, do you want me to have gun, gunner assistance? Is that what? Yeah, if we can do some teach, teach him, okay. and help him. So he might be okay. I want you to clarify. Sit. So when you made the statement just now, I don't want to end up in a handle situation because the dog lacks confidence. Because be what would be that reason? Because I've tried to avoid it on marking to force him, like to teach him that he needs to remember okay. instead of taking the path out. Oh well, she'll she'll direct me if I don't okay. remember. Now does he tend to does Gamble he, tend to look for help too much? Not very often. Is he, is he likely to pop on marks? None on marks. Okay. I mean, so when I handle on a mark, Sit. I'm not, not typically handling just to show them where the bird is in training. I'm handling to communicate something that I didn't want them to do. A cheat, return, a, some factor or some lesson. Returning to the old fall. Sit. Uh, avoiding water. Um, switching. Something yeah. like that. Most of the handles I do happen Sit. in route to the fall area, not necessarily Sit. in the fall area. So some people say, well, I, I hate to handle. And if I'm doing too much handling on marks, I might be doing too hard a mark. But I'm with you. But to, to say as a, now, Gamble's eight years old. But if Gamble was two and a half years old, and I'd say that says, well, how, what method are we going to use to advance him to the next level? Handling is one of those, and, and understanding what it means to be handled and understand the lessons that I'm trying to convey is an important part of advancing him. But without a doubt, if I'm having to handle on too many sets of marks and the dog's losing confidence because of that, that's not a good thing to do. Right. So. And he got a late start. He had some physical issues and got a late start. So okay. that's kind of where Okay, so Bill 1, Jake 2, double. We're going to do, remember what we Ready did with the one dog? We're going to do Heel. the double sit. on the left and then do the double on Rick sit. afterwards. So Rick, you can sit. Bill 1, Jake 2, double. Okay. Okay. Gamble, heel. 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 Gamble, heel. Right here. Sit. Bring them over on that. Sit. So left bird one, middle bird two. So step forward a little bit. I make sure you to do that. Bill, I want you to howl and wave.
Number two. Bill, stand up. Bill, stand up. Bill. Oh, excuse me, not, uh, Jake, I mean, Jake, Jake. Wait a little bit. Go ahead. Okay, Jake. Jake, we're gonna grab another bird. Let's, we're gonna re let's just redo this. Let's redo this. Yeah, I get, I get, I tried to do. I, yeah, let's pick it up and let's just do the whole thing over again. And we're go we're going to because he's he's had a little trouble picking the guns out, so we're gonna have make sure the gunners holler and wave and give us some motion prior to the throw. So let's just make sure he gets a good look at this. And those geese came over at the most untimely. Yes. <laughs> just as she sent, they made noise and there was a little confusion and and I got confused. I was trying to get Jake to stand up and I was telling Bill to stand up. So. You know, we're really out of practice, there's nothing wrong with doing singing. You know, if you're just trying to go for rhythm and routine. But uh, I'm just I'm gonna make some modifications and have the gunners great so there's not much so I make sure he sees the bird. So make it just a second to get. Okay, so this time, guys, just give me a wave when you're ready. And I want you guys both to stand up. And not only are you, I want you to, when we signal, I want you to holler, hey, hey, wave your arms prior to shooting, okay? Because I just want to make sure he gets a good look at these birds. So uh, I see Bill's up. Jake, when you're ready, go ahead and stand up as well. So, okay, so the handler is about ready. So step up a little bit, Christine. A little bit more. I think he's looking more at the middle station. Okay, so Bill, I want you to holler and wave. Bill. Is he looking at the left hand bird? Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Bill. I wasn't quite ready to uh, to launch it. So go ahead and pick that up again, Bill. I'll talk you through it. We just got a dog who's having a little trouble picking the stations up, so. I'm gonna ha I may have you holler and wave and then I may have you shoot and throw. Yeah, yeah. And move yourself in whatever position or don't worry about where the line itself is. So if I say holler and wave, that doesn't mean I'm going to necessarily shoot. I may say holler and wave just to get his attention. And then, then when I signal, do your normal thing. It'll take him a second to restrain, so. Thank you. So Bill, I may tell you to holler and wave, but wait until I actually signal to shoot and throw, okay? I'm just trying to simplify this for the dog that's a little bit uncertain. Mm. Okay, he's ready when you are, Christine. Okay, holler and wave and make some motion. Okay, he's looking, so I'm going to go ahead and let her rip. I seem to see it pretty well. Okay, Bill, you holler and wave. Jake, Jake. Oh, excuse me, Jake, 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 Jake. I got a good memory, it's just short. <laughs> Fifteen. Jake, stay standing. Jake, take a step out and help. Help, hey, hey. Help, help them. Hey, hey. So I'm going to get him over there with gunner assistance. Thank you. 
Bill, have an extra bird ready. You may hand throw a bird. Or if you're restrung already, you can put another one in. If you're not restrung, we can have a bird in your hand. So what I'm going to do, when he gets set, I'm going to have the gunner stand up, make a little motion, and I'm going to read the dog's attitude. And I may re-throw. I may just go through your normal routine as if you're going to send us a mermaid bird. Start to work a little bit. Okay, he looks like he's about ready. No, don't be in a hurry to send. Wave a little bit. Bill, wave. He's going okay. Go ahead and launch it right now. Launch it. Shoot it. I didn't see that. Um, Bill, or take a step towards the bird. Take a step. As long as he's hunting, let him hunt. First thing is, you just, you know, if he's just uncertain, he's got to go when he's uncertain, and then we try to make it so it's, the outcome is reasonably positive. So we had to use the gun to kind of coax him over there. I tried to time it to get that throw just as he was starting to fade and get a little bit, but he didn't see it. So I had to go to do something else. Why don't we do two singles on the right here? Because I okay. think just rhythm is probably better. So we're going to do two singles. Uh, we'll do we'll do pop up first, I guess. Bird thrown to the right. Now, one thing you can do too is I like to do bird and mouth sometimes. You know, have the bird still in the mouth. It works on the rhythm and routine of a double, but you tell them to mark. Okay, holler a little bit and duck call. Right here it goes. Right, take the bird and send it. So that works on the mechanics of the memory bird, you know, the delivery, the send, the rhythm. A good thing to do when you got a dog who's just struggling a little bit with with doubles or memory birds. It just adds one more layer of mechanics that are similar to doing a double without doing a double. Because it, you know, there's the pre-delivery anticipation and look that you have to do on a multiple. That's all right, there's no bird over there, so let him just, as long as he's hunting and looking, he's, there's nothing wrong with him kind of figuring it out. And if he goes over there, I'll have to take a step in the direction, but getting him to be confident and, 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 and hunting and big, trying to figure it out. They don't really, I, and I'm watching these little dandelions and the wind has got kind of a little bit actually to the left to right. But right there he should get a whip. Yeah. Rick, just take a step towards your bird. Take a step and give a little hump. Rick, take a, take a step towards your bird, a little hey hey. So, you know, now you can stop. Let's let him hunt. I don't necessarily want to put him right on the bird. I just want to use the gun to kind of pattern his hunt a little bit. Okay. All right. Now we'll do a single on your other bird. Don't do bird mouth on this. Let's just do it. Finish with a nice normal little. Bit. So you know, you come up here and you say, "Darn it, I wanted to do multiple, and I did singles." Mm. A few years ago, there was a national in St. Louis, and Chris Ledford, the pro from, he had a dog named, what was it, Ruckus. Handle was Razor Ruckus. He was like off his game. Couldn't do anything right all week. All they could do were singles. In the easiest way they could do it. You know, he thought, man, if I could, I'm not even going to get through the first series when he won the national. So sometimes they're just like that. Howard.
Just started in a master. She has one master pass. Okay. Um, she started head swinging quite a bit lately. Um, so what do you think you're going to do here? So do the long, long signal, signal first. first, and then you're going to do the triple after that. I think so. And the order of the trip. Remind me of the order of the triple you're going to do. Um, we were doing it initially. What did we do? We went. Um, then we go middle. Or excuse me. Mama one, Papa two, or excuse me, Mama one, middle bird two, Papa three. I think that's the way we did the trip. Yes. Okay, yeah. We did it, we've done it so many different ways. Okay. Single on Bill. It'll be a single and then a triple. And I would like you guys to stand just because she's got a head swing and picks up. Single on Bill. Here. here the triple here. will be Mama here. one. Here. Jake two. Here. Papa three. But it'll be a single first. Here we go. If I was saying, wait a minute, I got a dog that's likely to look off this, you were like this, Sit. and she was here. And her influence was like this. If you step up like this, Sit. you're going to close that door. If you step back, that's what happens. Okay? Here. Okay, triple. Christine. Mama. Okay. Mama one. Jake two. Papa three. All the same thing. Here. There's nothing more. Oh my goodness, like I forgot my homework. When you get to the lot, it's always by you, that's your whistle. So. Like, what row? <laughs> I watched one guy do this. <laughs> and over the. Uh, Mama one. Jake will be two. Papa will be Papa will be good. 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 I 
don't know yet, huh? Okay. What do you think? Well, I'm, I mean, there's arguments for both, but. Okay. The outside, outside middle is oftentimes what the dogs are most comfortable with, but some people like to pick up mama papas as a pair. Really? Because they think it makes more sense to them. Hmm. In other words, mama then papa, or papa then mama. <laughs> okay. We have to do a rebirth after this dog. We're cooking one pretty good here. Oh, we have four more after this? That's okay. Okay, good. Well, then our rebirth should finish us up. This is Tayoga. She's five. Okay. And um, I'm an obedience trainer who's trying to learn oh, guilt. Um, I've been working with Bridget Bodine, and oh, yeah. she said now, to say hi. She's relocated. She's in Northeast Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. So. And she was in Scranton for. Well, that's where she is still. Oh, okay. Uh, she's she's just like changed her role, and she's going to be running her own business now instead of working for the kennel. Gotcha. Yeah. She's got different property and everything. Uh, same property for a while, I hope. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hope. Um, so Excellent. we, Excellent. yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It's good to have someone close by. Okay. So tell me, what level of dog do we have? She finished senior last year. Okay. We've done a few triples, not a lot. Okay. Um, and she does head swing, so I like that long single. Okay. To start with. And we want to do a. The triple in an easier fashion then you think or do you I'm not sure she, and she also has just been doing obedience all winter long so it might not hurt to simplify it a little bit okay and you know again you know nobody's done it but if they've really been virtually no marks there's nothing wrong with doing four singles so I'm not telling you to right. that direction but if you're... right um I think at least one double would okay. probably be good okay because I need to work on 
that sort of okay. procedure too. All right, we're going to do a single on Bill. Bill, you've got a bird bag that's white sticking out of the blind, just dragging inside a little bit. Okay, single on Bill. And I'm not, well, I'm going to think about what we're going to do next. We'll probably, you know, a delayed triple is always a good thing to do. Okay. Because that's that gives you only one memory book, huh? That's what I was thinking. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do a single on Bill. All right. Sit. Delay triple gives you one memory bird. And you know, after you picked up two, so it has an enhance of the triple, but Heel. simplicity of two singles, but it gives you the rhythm and routine of a, Heel. Of a triple set. Sit. 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 I'm going to do marks. Heel. Heel. I always get a kick out of obedience dogs because they come up, oh, yeah. and when feathers are involved, they're not so obedient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good friends with Connie Cleveland and certainly one of the more competitive years of being this Fourteen. Five. I started talking a little bit about the Chesapeake, that I, I've been around a really good one, but I've seen some of the really good Goldens too. I've been fortunate. I was at the 85 National Amateur when Top Brass Cotton won the National. I got to see Windbreaker's Mighty Mo. He was fantastic. Okay, we're going to do Jake 1, Papa 2 as a double. Rick, when she comes back with your papa bird, we're going to throw your mama bird as a single as a delayed bird. So it's going to be, so. Okay, I'm going to ask you a thing. Hold, hold the whole, hold your horses just a second. What I was thinking is one, two, pick this up. So the middle bird delayed, then you've got that as a mini bird. Now, if you think you want to simplify it even more, we could throw one. To pick this up, delay this, and leave that in. What, whatever memory bird you think is most beneficial for you. Let's do Bill 1, Papa 2, and if he, she comes, and she certainly didn't act like she lacked confidence. She does on water, but not so much. Okay, so Bill 1, Papa 2, double. So that's the middle station is Bill. I see. I'm lying. I'm, I'm screwing this up. Jake won. Jake won. Papa two. I picked up that one. Yep. Yep. You pick. So you're going to pick up. So it's the middle station who is Jake. Punk punk. Shepherd. So step forward with your left leg. Sit. Do it again and tell her this. Now, and emphasize the sit command because you don't want her to walk with you. All you're trying to do is, is get her to look to the left a little bit. So, and bring your right foot even with your left foot. Perfect. You just close the door whether you realize it or not. And you're perfect. Step up a little bit more because you just looked away. Again, again. Watched it nicely. Now step backwards. See how you pull her to the right, and then pull to the right. Here goes the papa bird. Number four. So now we're gonna throw the Rick's gonna throw the mama bird. Do bird and mouth here. Bring her in, cue her up a little bit. Where? Where? Okay, well whatever you need. Here, here we go, I'm gonna see. Okay, that's a good one. Take the bird and send her whenever you're ready. Yeah. 
and that bird mouth just creates the flow and, and routine of a multiple retrieve. Okay, good girl. Very good. So, we've got Jake. Jake from State Farm, I can remember that. <laughs> 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 Step up and there you go. Step up and there you go. Step up and there you go. Step up and thing by stepping up that you needed the litter kind of let the Polaroid develop a little bit. You, you sent a little quick for me. You got to kind of jog your memory. Wave your arms just a little bit. There you go. Much better. Now stand. Now wave and step out of the blind and hey hey a little bit. Hey hey. Louder. Louder. Okay. You gotta be, stop it. Stop. Here. I'm going to rethrow it. Grab another bird. We're going to hand throw a bird. Okay. Grab another bird. Oh, we're going. Is there a dog out there? Mm -hmm. Well, whose dog is that? Okay, we got a little bit of a glitch. We got a, looks like an old retired dog coming into the field. Not one of mine. Mine are all gold. <laughs> all right, we'll throw that one. Oh, Jake from State Farm's got a dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a way you can, you want to reload it? Could you just restrain him and then throw the single, or do you need to take him out of the field? Uh, <laughs> okay, we have a little hiccup. So you know what we're going to do? Um, Rick, go ahead and reload. I'm going to repeat a double. Because okay. I want you to try to do a double, and we got a delay anyway, so we're going to go with the flow. Maybe we should ask him what he's wearing. I was Hopefully like, wait, that's I thought it was a golden that just ran. I don't know what happened. <laughs> So it reminds me of a, uh, there's a, there's a dog who won a national amateur that I was associated with named Grady. He was bred a lot. Uh, Chad Baker's Grady, and he, Chad's in Bristol. And I remember Grady was 11 years old, and they had a field trial out on his property. And uh, Chad's house was up on the hill. And Grady just, he was pissed off because they were running and he couldn't run anymore. And he was. So the second day of the field run, um, they didn't finish the first series. And it wasn't more like, no problem, no big deal. So the judge was staying and he judge came out early in the morning in the dark because it was it was a fall trial. And, it was, and he's driving up to the line to kind of, they had to run five or six dogs. And as he's driving, he runs his bend and he sees some eyeballs flash by him in the dark. Sit. And he wonders, what the heck that was? So he, he, had, he had to kind of drive up this little hill and he gets up there and gets out and he starts walking up and they had left all the equipment out like this, just like this. And Grady was sitting in the holy book. <laughs> he had heard all that shooting the day before and they let him out to pee and, and he said, I don't want to quit. I want to, and he was, he was in the field, he was sitting in the holding line, waiting, he said, if I sit here long enough, I'm going to finally get to win this test. And he was really, a, it was a heartwarming story where Grady had a grass on and lost half his lung and they took a bunch of ribs out and they didn't think he was going to live. And he won his national in Montana up in the mountains and it was just a real testimonial to that dark courage and perseverance that he could get through 10 series at high altitude and you know really i remember when i heard that he won i i pulled over on the side of the road and i had to cry i i was one of the guys that took him to the emergency clinic when he thought he was going to die he thought this 
And we were worried he was even going to try to run the national. He's not going to make it. He can't. We got half a lot. Well, he won. But he was sitting in that hole <laughs> just like that dog was. Ready to go. Okay, we're going to do a double. Um, let's do Jake one, Mama two double. I want to. This, this is uh, because I want to work on this memory for thing. So, Jake, you're going to be one. Rick is going to be two. I want you to have another bird ready, just in your hand. You can. Doesn't have to be a great throw. But I want to get this dog to do a memory bird double. And I want to nurse them through it a little bit, okay? So, Bill, you can sit. It'll be a double. Jake, one. Two. Rick, six. mama, two. Yeah, one. Just a second. I'm going to get these kind of get themselves situated. So it'll be just a second. Okay. Jake, wave and holler. sits down, I just want you to stand up and I don't I, and wait for further instructions. So I'm gonna just let her look out there. Okay. Wait a minute. Let's stand up now. I'm gonna just read wait your arms just a little bit. Alright, go ahead, you send. Holler and throw the bird. Go ahead, right now. Holler and throw the bird. So she was still going to do some of the same thing. So we got to do it. You know, just say, all right, yeah, we got some work to do. She's been a little bit, hasn't had a lot of marks lately. Certainly, you know, looks like she's enthusiastic, but just looks rusty. Right. Okay. Okay, Jake, pick up the extra bird. Let's restring and. Um, I think we're going, what we'll do for the next dog, you're going to go with that delayed triple like she I think so. I just want to evaluate where he's at. Okay, so uh, when we, hey, after, yeah, go ahead and pick up the introvert. Restring and then let me know when you're ready. So we'll be doing Bill as a single first. Okay. And then probably that delayed triple, but I'll do that. You need your chair over there? So is that Yeti the, the uh, case for that? Camera, you got? No, uh, only electronic radio. I will more show you later. <laughs> so they make a a storage case. Yeah, <laughs> Sit. Oh. Sit. 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 Yeah. Heel. <laughs> no, he's still around. Okay. He's in the car. Okay. He's almost 12. What's his name? Crash. Crash. Okay. He was good to you. Yeah. You had a lot of fun with him. And the puppy I have, the young dog, is out of Crash. Oh, nice. Cute. I worked with Carol with her first dog quite a bit. And then she, she lost a really nice dog. And uh, I'll tell you what, Carol goes all out. She's all the equipment. Hold on here, Archie. Built a Built pond. Built works harder than you. <laughs> here. Okay, single bill. Single bill. Here. Heel. I clean my head. Heel. So she nicked him going wide a little bit. I'm going to turn the surgery in the head. Sit. In the shape. Here.
Okay, we're going to do Jake 1, Papa 2, and then we'll, do, we'll throw your mama bird after she comes back with Papa. Okay, so we delay triple. Jake 1, Papa 2. She said it's got a set of bouts of Rocky Mountain party season. Well, when she's having trouble off the right getting it to pull towards her. That, that is, that's a good challenge. Maybe I'll just tell you that. <laughs> Whether you handle this way or not, Cheryl, I mean, I, I, I remember it. I'm watching her. her. Her line mechanics are stepping forward and back, are identical to what I would typically what do. So hop up, or bomb up. Sit. So, so line movement. Now, would you handle on the, the moment right? But I don't know if I would. I would, I would go with what I thought I could communicate the best. She's asking, would she run this off the right or the left? And, I mean, if you're being really clinical, you would probably run off the right. But if you're trying to, if you, you're trying to influence the dog more at the bowling line, and you think he might want to go back to the middle, then I'd run off the left. I'd run off whatever you. side I thought I could. Faded outside, got a little bit uncertain. And then... You kind of want to remember got a little bit lost. Well, right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Marcy. Hi, Marcy. Nice to meet you. What's your daughter's name? Joker. Joker. <laughs> yes. So right away, I think Joker is a good Joker from Rochester, Minnesota. Oh, Joker. nice. Tell me about nice. Joker. So Joker just turned two in end of January. Okay. Um, he has he doesn't have a senior title yet. We're working toward his senior. Okay. Um, he's had, you know, probably a handful of um, a handful of triples. Okay. So I don't my. I don't know what you would, I, I was thinking of, you know, I wanted to do the long one as single. a single and then see what you recommend. Um, right. As far as. Um, I mean, that a, a delayed triple or a double and a single, I mean, I don't know where, you told me where he is. I don't know where he is currently in his training and, 
has he been have you been training for a few weeks or yeah i mean we ha we have he's had some some training um he's he's stronger on the land than the water and just because we haven't had real okay. great water um okay. to work in recent so, we'll so. A single line bill i may change the order of the delayed triple just to, i may throw this one like that too okay delay the middle one and may, just leave that as a regular that's, okay. That would be a, a I, the way it's working. That would be a easier version. Okay. If we want to kind of work on it. Okay. The, so. The so single on the left bird. And then this will be a memory. To. To pick this up, throw that as a single, pick it up, and then okay. that bird on the far right would be the papa bird would be the only bird as well. Okay. Be the, be the memory bird. Sit. Sit. Okay. Single. Heel. Heel. Sit. Enthusiastic, and he is. <laughs> Bill, how? How are they? Take this. Right. Oh, okay. That's, that's there. Oh, that's part of the deal. Okay, well, that's all right. He's out there. He's, out there. He's working for the bird. Again. And take a step, you know, just in that direction, stand still. Take a step up there now, without him looking. Just take a step, make the birds and stop. One more, and hey, hey. So you think that was mostly because Daddy was in the holy one? I think it was part of it, but to be honest, I wasn't. Maybe you could tell because I was looking at him. I wasn't one hundred percent sure if he saw it. No, I just kind sure of sent it. Off a lot ago. Yeah, he does. I think he did. He acted like he saw it. Okay. He just acted like he kind of lost his focus about eight percent of the way out. Okay. You know what I think we should do? I think we should just do a double. Yeah, okay. And he had a little trouble on the first bird. Let's just. We're not going to do a delay triple. We're going to do Papa one. Uh, Jake two, Papa one, Jake two. So it's right hand bird one, and then the middle station will be number two. And we'll do a double, and then we'll finish with a single. So the right hand bird is first. Right, not, not that one. Yeah, there you go. Step forward a little bit. Step forward just a little bit. Jay Power, stand up. Power, wave. Okay, let it go.
he has to be dialed to launch it, but I wanted Mark to, to make sure he's looked at it. Okay, Okay, single on mama. Yeah. And he thought it was good. Well, that is, that is a good, because, don't let that come in with you too quick, because if they're 10 feet deep of the bird, you get to get charged with a handle. So, he was right on the bird. He likes to do this, doesn't he? Must be all those thunder launchers. Yeah. Well, good for you to kind of know what his body language is when he's ready to go. Well, because so he went on the more on the noise and the. Well, he had a breaking issue. So that's because he was trying to get through the fence. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think he'll go where sent. I'm just, he's never seen a quad and okay. everything retired. Here we go. Bill Water J2. <laughs> Everything's retired. <laughs> There's no standout gun after that. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. We're ready. Okay. Dog number 12. Yep. Right. Sit. He's learning my blind routine. Sit. <laughs> Stand up, Jake. Wave your arms just a little bit. Oh, go ahead. Think the the funky the holy line. Well, I didn't say slay like I always do. I don't know, but it got weird. Plus, nothing stands out like you yeah. Tired. Okay, holler now. Okay, holler. So, now I guess I should change up a little bit. Um, I tell you know. what. Here's what I want you to do. Here, here. I want you to pick your bird up. Bill, or if you have another bird, let's just restring. Uh, Jake, you can sit down. We're done with you. <laughs> yeah, he just. You know. I get confused and then it's like, whoa. So why don't we do. Now, we could do this double over here and then do the single on the left if you want to stay real quick. Or we could throw the triple left. Mama. Not with that, not with that. With that funkiness. Not with that funkiness, maybe like. Now, if you think he's really, if it's, then we could just do three singles. If you just want to get him used to it. Let's do Mama one, Papa two, double. Mama one, Papa two, double. Then we'll do a single and Bill after we do that. Okay. Sometimes you just go, you go with a plan and you say, all right, how do we... I watched this dog do some, actually I worked with Daniel a little bit yesterday, and this dog did some pretty complicated fish stuff, but it was more no, jackets and me. routine and things that he was used to, and just the change of feel just kind of knocked him, knocked him a little bit for a little so. yep. The only thing I would say is that, you know, confused or not confused, they need to go, and then we... Stand up and help. Rick, stand up and help. Come on, Mom. Hey, hey. Loud, loud, Rick. Loud. You're not going that way. 
wouldn't correct the old father. Hey, hey, hey. Is he that hard to hear or is he not yelling very well? There, I can hear him now. Keep calling, Rick. Keep calling. You want to pick him up and rethrow it? Yeah. Rick, we're going to have to rethrow it. He, yeah. you're not, he's not re yeah. responding to the house. Yeah. Rick's got that real soft spoken voice. In I tell my growers, you gotta holler like you slammed your finger in the door. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna have to do. And we can do everything from have the guns obvious or we can we can just do singles for a while with this routine until he gets used to it. But I think it's helpful. I think it's helpful for hunt test dogs to look at Field trial atmosphere and good for field trial dogs to do this because it just makes them more well rounded. Yeah. Well, you saw this last summer when well, I trained with Sean all summer. Yeah, so. Not this year. <laughs> and these guys use the thunder launchers a lot, which, and, and a lot of dogs would be unused to that. You know, and, you know, in distances. Okay, I think Rick is ready. Can you stay standing instead of sitting sure. down? Rick, we'll just have you stay standing after you launch here. It looks like he's ready when you are. Just this and the loudspeaker. Who knows? Okay, Bill, we're going to do a signal on you. We're going to have you stay standing. And I guess that's it. Yo, hi, boy. Come on. Yo. I'm going to tell you something to, about a routine that I suggested she do. Now I really think she should do it. And I'll tell you guys about it. That time he went, he went to it, but there he comes. Okay, thank you guys. Um, Rick, we're going to leave your station set up the way it is, and the other stations we can start to break down. So what, what I'm going to tell her, Billy Eckett was a, who's passed, who's a great dog trainer, he was from upstate New York, but won a couple nationals. Blackwater kennels. He was a, actually his kennel was in Kansas City, but he was from. And he had a routine that he did when he had a dog that, had, and he would have a gun station out there. Yeah. Dog, he'd yeah. tell the dog to mark, and he'd send it without a throw. And then when the dog left, he got from here to you, he got a throw. And progressively, he would he do this a few times. And some people call it go and throw, but it's a routine to get a dog to go whether they saw something thrown or not. And then you throw in root, and the dogs become a little more trusting. Like I didn't say anything, but if you said something there, and you send them on on, on the on the mark cue, uh, they go. And so it's we, we nicknamed it Blackwater Magic because he would, and we so we did it for a few different reasons. But it was done predominantly for a dog who had uncertainty or was unclear, like on a fourth bird, and didn't really remember it, so had may not go or may spin, but. Uh, 
not a bad little routine, and I've done it with dogs even just as a routine, just to say, hey, you know what? Whether you saw anything or not, trust me, there's something out there. And you'll see them, like, take off, and I, they're running, waiting for the bird to get thrown in it. You know, it's not something I do a ton of, but I would do it with him a little bit. And I would do it with you guys and say, oh, he didn't see it. Well, so what? He's still got to go. I mean, trust me, there's something out there. I don't send them like on a blind. I send them on, I'd say, Mark, sit, you know, uh, slight. And when the dog leaves, it's under throat. And so they're always anticipating, well, I don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, there's something out there. Sometimes then I may not throw till they're almost to the bird. But it's a little bit of a routine to kind of get a dog comfortable going when they, when they didn't see anything thrown. So, yeah. I may shoot or I may, I mean, I, and I do it pretty simple because I want it, I, it's the intention of it going well. And then eventually you can do it on really all of them. I mean, they, now the only side effect is sometimes, you know, now you do a blind near a gunner and all of a sudden they're waiting for that bird to be thrown and there, you know, there are some side effects if you overdid it. But it's a nice little routine and I could do it with just some short walking singles and just, have the gunner there, they look up, they think something's about to get thrown, and you send them and they go like, boom, and then the bird gets thrown. Now they just, they charge out there with full anticipation that something has happened that they didn't know, or something's about to happen. So it's a proactive way to manage that. So this would be a good time if you needed a, a, a short... Okay, ten of each. Okay, so show me where they're at. I okay. see that one. Okay. Um, actually, no. I, I don't want to single. I, I can say, I want you to put. You see the ribbon on the tree? Right off the branch. Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay. If you put 10 there, you put the place of the goosey book. Okay. Okay. And then there's a little bit of an angle, and it's just outside the middle of the and, I think it's and you have to cast into, into the wind. This is going to be a little crosswind. Maybe. Yeah, you got to cast into the wind. I think that's going to be like Yeah, I you have to do a little bit of it. <laughs> and there's going to be a little bit of it. <laughs> Sit. But that was single planted. Sit. Another one, one bubble or one bird at a time. It would have a tricky end because anytime you make it difficult to be on the downward side of a blind, you've got to grab it. Because the downward side will move up. So, you know, if you end up flat, they, they don't win it. If they end up too far back, they probably go over the and you have to kind of manage that ending. So you have to be a little sharp. Uh oh, boxing drill. <laughs> you know, I, and I'll next name some of those things. You know, once they cross that ridge, I want you to come in talk that last little ridge, it's just the side of the floor. Yeah. The, you know, the, everything her and her husband that, that would be what I would call the That's where your hand would have to be more precise and aggressive. Is that a dike or is it uh, like it's a flat? A, it's, a, it's a dike. It goes in and then there's a pond on the back side of it. I knew there was water there, but is it just like a hoop up and over or a little bit of grass? It's up and over. Up and over? Maybe it's not deep. I mean, you okay. have a fall wheel on the deck. Yeah. So oh, it's, not so, it's not just a foot pass. Okay, okay. Okay. So we're going to run our test dog, and our test dog is going to run line three and four. Does everybody understand what, what the numbers of these are? Six. The number from right to left. One, two, three, four. You're going to pick two of the four to do with the dog you run. So I'll just tell you, the four, you know, you can do one of them, but I would, I'm going to give everybody the option. I, I like to do double one. So, one would be we would walk out, put a bumper down underneath the branch. Number two is just outside of that. And number one would not have a pile of bumpers, so you don't have to worry about the other one getting back in and picking up an old one. Uh, two and three could be really challenging double wide. And three and four, probably the most challenging, would definitely be the most challenging version. So, uh, Anyways, that's our plan. So, so we're ready bring to white. go here, huh? I didn't bring white, so. So you yeah, guys will have to be. So the only thing we may want to do is move that board because it could be it's going to be right behind. I mean, even that, even the other board, uh, either put it behind the board. We're not really using it at this moment. Okay. That's 
you. Dead. Heal. If we run short on time on some tests, we may forego a test dog, but I'm always going to ask the first running dog if they want to test dog or not. Which good thing we had this morning because we had some hiccups with our. What line are we going to do, right? Three and then two. Are you going to do? Are you going to do three first? Yeah, that's the line that interests me the most. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. You I'm just trying to decide. Um, now, that's, I'll tell you why I hesitated with that answer. If I'm thinking like, if this is a factor that the dogs. Let's put it this way. If the dogs want to go right and they get in trouble for not casting left, I don't want to do my next blind in the direction that I corrected them for going previously. For example, um, if I do a crosswind blind, I want to do progressively greater commitment to the challenge. Okay, then we'll do two and then three. I understand that. So that's what Good I'm saying. Good idea. Okay. So I guess I wouldn't want to, if the dog wanted to fade to the right on blind, Three. Mm -hmm. I feel like, wait a minute, I don't want to go for the right. I want to go for the left. I want to go in the direction that they didn't want to go for. So, okay, it may not be that way here, but it 
just makes me, I usually want to increase the commitment to the, to the factor. If it's crosswind, I want to go more crosswind. If it's side hill, I want to go more side hill on the second run. If it's water, I want to go with greater commitment to the factor on the second retrieve. I don't want to go to less commitment. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's why I it. You ready? Yeah. She's going to do two and three. Here. Remember, if you're going to do one and two, we need to you need to give me just enough of a heads up to plant number one because it's not planted. Okay. one of those good dogs in a dark corner because she's so light colored she's easy to see. certain about it, have somebody hold your dog in a holding blanket. Get up there and look at it. So when you hit the mat, you're in charge. She's not looking around like, I don't know what do you want to do. I don't know what do you want to do. Kind of thing. I, I want you to be serious when you get up there. And same thing on a double blind. Don't start picking up where the second blind is when the dog's on line. Do it when they're coming back. So you're, so you're real proactive and real Silent as a steering wheel. So now, you see, she got more directional. And, so, and we'll talk about the use of voice versus silent caster. And it's come up 20 times. Perfect caster. That was an end of the wind cast. Nice. Okay, you finished that good. So, certainly, you know, if I was making notes, I'd say keep an eye on the sits. The sits are a little shaky. She stands up one time. She has a little bit of a loopy sit. One time she kind of coasted, and, you know, so her sits need a little attention, in my opinion. Come on! Jen! And her response to coming in, because she's, she's a little rally gagged a little bit. She plays with it. She's not real serious. She's not really respectful of the return, so it certainly would be maybe unlike to do this. Okay, what are we going to do with our second dog? Three and four. We Three need, and four. Okay. Yeah, we need to find his holes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Where are these going? We can just get my can put him to the other side of it. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. Just so they don't get. Do you have a part? Can head I come out from the other side of the line? Come out from any okay. side that you want. Okay. Heel. Sit. Sit. So yeah. planning your exit out of the holding line, you know, where you, because when the dog first looks in the field, they're going to start, when you're walking in the line, they're thinking about, like, where's my next bird coming from? Yeah. So if there's an advantage, some way on the way you approach, 
one of the best things you can do is make your last two or three steps directly at your target. And that's why the handler wanted to walk this way. Because she wanted to walk directly at the line number three. And that was smart. Yeah. 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 Easier way to get lined up if they're walking in the direction that you're wanting to run. Okay, that's a reasonable start. That was a good whistle. Okay. I did the same cast without the voice this time. Okay. Now I just work. This feels like a little bit of a left to right crosswind. It's, it's kind of old, just, um, just on my left ear. So I typically will say silent into the wind, verbal with the wind. And we'll talk about it and you look at it and you're like, what? <laughs> but because silent is the steering wheel, it's going to create more directional change laterally. The verbal is going to create more rearward momentum emphasis. So, so when you're casting with the wind, the wind's going to push them more laterally. When you're casting into the wind, they're going to be less likely to cast lateral. So if you're emphasizing the wind left or right, it's more silent. It's the steering wheel. The verbal, that's the gas pedal. So it'll come up plenty of times, so don't worry. We'll move the button here. We must have a little bit of a history of, of the four stops. <laughs> it's the big three, go, stop, and come. I mean, it's pretty bomb proof. I mean, and most lines fall apart when stopping mechanics. He gave you a great ride, and then he said, Yeah, I'm going to put it over here. And he got a little bit. There we show our holes, which is what we're here for. <laughs> you know what? I love his momentum, his initial line. He ran straight. I mean, it's all a lot of good things. He got, do you think it was influenced from the marks? Well, I, th I don't think it was on the initial line, but I think if he got closer and he said, You know, he, he had, had a Western react, he said, You know, I'm doing pretty good here. And then he, then I think he quite recognized it was a mark in a sense. And then I don't know what happened from there when he came all the way in. That was kind of, I didn't know if he was coming back to you or he was just in hunt mode. 
Yes. Says you're not my dad. Uh, well, that's right. Okay, what two, what two are we doing? We're going to do three and four. Three and four. Okay. Well, come on down. Let's get the price is right. Sit. <laughs> like that. <gasps> Good decision to mass plant these because mechanic wise will I mean I, I like to send the plant with birds food because that's what they get. again here. Kind of hit the wall a little bit. Now you punch through that. Now you can open the wall. Now you can reestablish your own momentum. Now you can... Okay. Very nice casting though. She's that good old thing? Because I mean, really you beautiful like carry that cast beautifully? Yeah. How old are um, But last summer, I trained mostly alone, so we worked a lot of blinds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It shows. Looked, I mean, you know, you get you know, a little messy there, but I mean, I yeah. there were a lot of things I really liked about it. Uh, when the dog, I mean, she gave that cast and she said too much, but I mean, that's... Here. A lot of dogs don't want to carry this cast. They want to turn their big back and go back to where they're going. So. Okay. Well, I'm doing number three, and then I'm going to decide. Okay. Sit. Okay. Get out of the picture here. Yeah, Depending on how things you. go. Thank Come you very much. Okay. Oh, very cool. Here. 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 Okay. Sit. Here. Okay. 
I, they not only need to sit, they need to salute. And he was saluting to me. He was like really focused on the handler. He wasn't. And that's a, that's a lovely thing to do. Good Body language is starting to change. Thank <laughs> you. 
Leads and those other pieces of equipment, you know. Some judges will get pretty strict if they get if that's sticking out of your pocket or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, don't need to give excuses to throw us out. Yeah, you're really close to it. Here! Yeah, let's get it on it. Here! Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh! Just a little bit of a tricky ending. Right hand girl will die. Second cast was like gorgeous. I'm happy. He's so colorblind that he's actually sat on bumpers and having yeah. to tell him that. Some dogs see mosquitoes yeah. and some. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. I like it. And it's, all my blinds are like this. I get them to the end and it's five or six whistles at the end. Yeah. So your red zone stuff needs some, needs some work. Hey, just proper. He did get there a little bit. Water. He was thinking like, hey, let me sneak in on this. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not really working today, but he's just getting, he's like, okay. okay. What are we going to do? Uh, send light, please. Okay. 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 We're getting, we're getting work. We're getting just a series of, th- of steps that I would work up. And initially, it has nothing to do with stopping on a whistle. It has to do to teach them how to square up. Yeah, okay. And then you go into pile work and do a board line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How many, in your world of hunt tests, would judges be strict about what side of that left-hand decoy you were on in a, in a test? Would you feel that... I've not run that many miles. I've only run... I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just asking. I thought he was fine. But I'm just asking you guys, um, yeah. are they going to be that particular? Okay. All right. No, I know. It's, it's only a few feet off. I get it. I'm just saying, I'm not that anal about it, but there are some judges that I think would say, um, you need to be to the left, to the right of that left decoy. Now, I'll tell you why, if you, now go ahead, you finish. I don't, because you're doing a great job. I don't want to break your concentration, but I will talk about that for a second. Ah! Neat little dog. Mm-hmm. He looks out like a champ. Hmm. 
You know that terrain kind of leads them right there. Mm -hmm. And if you put that blind a little further down, it could be even a little trickier because then the angle. Nice. So I would just say that, um, you know, some judges said, I want you to go right of that left decoy. Now, what it does is it puts you in more jeopardy and put it into the holding blind. And so it puts you a little more risk. But um, knowing kind of what how strict your judge's standards are, uh, when you have things like that that are like, yeah, the line is to the right of that left decoy. However, it's not. You're only talking from me to the dog. But now, some judges and will actually diagram in the holding blind what their judge's sheet looks like instead. And they'll put in those things. And they'll say, this is my ideal line to the blind. They may not say, you must be there. But they're going to say that it is a priority of mine. I just want you to know it. I think that's not a bad thing. Those were lovely things. But I would say, like, if I was working, and I'm working with you, I'm thinking, like, all right, I may want to, like, start to put factors in blinds that I'm going to force you to challenge because this dog looks like a really nice good dog. So pushing you and her to higher levels of precision would be something I would do because she looks like she's very capable of it. Just looks out beautiful, great momentum. <laughs> okay. okay, what are we doing? Thank you. So because she's not that advanced, I feel like I should say I want to do two and three, but the truth is I'd kind of like to try three and four, <laughs> but it may fall apart. So what do you think? Um, well, uh, remind me how you're, did we have trouble on your marks? Yes. Do two and three. Okay. Six. Or you'll have plenty of Okay. Six. You won't have trouble challenging. And if at the lunch break or something you wanted to run blind four just for your own deal? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. If two and three you knock out, I should. Sit. Heal. Uh, and you do it too hard, I said, should have made it easier. Heal. <laughs> Sit. Welcome to World of Dog Training. Sit. Go a little more of an angle and a step. Okay. Two, one, again. Repeat the cast you just gave. Good. Now stop. Now go right in verbal back. Go! That's interesting. Good. He uses go and no sound a lot alike, don't they? I say uh-uh. Oh, Usually, yeah. when I remember. Wouldn't that like if you? But she sent on go. Okay. Well, you know, a handler may want to alert a judge to like I've got a different style. I use this because it would make you go like you can. You can go. No, I think. Good. Go. Nice one. Hi, girl! Good. Did you get it? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. 
Well, oh, tweet, tweet. I think she's right at it. Is she shopping? Oh, okay. I think she was pretty much right at the line. So, yeah, there was a little dip to the left there. And you're right, a single planted bird it can be a little bit of a tricky area. Yeah. So that was a handler that would use G and R like a sled dog. So, you know, when you got different styles, it, it, the big bumper is just made of a little jumbo. Here. Very cool. Good girl. So, is there, because she had trouble, it makes me wonder, are we getting low on blinds on number three? If we know we have to replant, let's do a little, let's see where we are number one. Is yeah, there the roster right there? Yeah. Seven, so eight. Are you using all these? Oh, we got a little out of order. Six. Orange at one and white at oh, okay. the I just want to make sure we have. Very slobbery. If you want. I don't know if he wants to go. Five dogs left? I think they're all mixed. Oh, let's just make sure we have five each. Wait, how many have got? I know, I was trying to see who I knew didn't run yet, but I still have six and six. You have six and six. You know what? If you got, if you can put six in each, do it. You do white at one steak and orange at the I couldn't tell with you. Oh, okay. So we... That's why I keep my count. Alright, so who had the question about squaring a dog up on a crooked set? I guess maybe they're not. Oh, alright, never mind. We'll, we'll talk. You're headed out in the field. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Let me, uh. So, the there's two parts to a cat. There's the visual, and then there's the voice. Now, sometimes there is no voice. But if there is a vocal cat, where the voice influences the dog in relationship to when he sees the hand has an effect. Because we're going to say that any hand signal influences the dog in the direction of the hand signal, right? And so it's going to influence more left or more right. The word back influences away from you, okay? So when I want a straighter back and just a little bit of change, I may go back. So the voice and the hand hit almost simultaneously. And then there's times where I go back and I want to get a little more directional change and, 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 and kind of bend them around with the voice. So the primary part of the calf is what affects the dog first. Now, then you have to kind of take into consideration the distance you are from the dog because the time it takes for sound to get there is different than the visual part. The speed of sound versus the speed of light, right? So you see somebody shoot a flyer way in the distance and you see the feathers go and then it's a second and then you hear the report of the, of the gun. So you realize, wow, it took a while for that voice, that sound to get there. So if you if you want it to be, sometimes you have to say the word back, wait a, a split second, and then cast to, to time it right. So what I was saying to Christy, the dog was kind of she was tacking them through the decoys. She was on the left edge of the corridor. She wanted to bump her to the right a little bit, and she went back. And the dog responded more to this than the verbal. And the dog almost took her right hand over. And I said, because the dog had broken down a little bit, that it needed a bigger influence to go away from us. So I, that's why I said to you, I would have gone, ah! just about like that. So the voice was firm and a lot of conviction to it. And I think it had punched him out of that area. He was, you can see the dog started to hunt a little bit. He said, oh, look at all this. And, and now, you've, now it's not only the smell of that mark, it's the influence of the foot scent of the person walking out, picking it up. So there's a lot of reason for a dog to break down and want to hunt that foot. Plus the decoys. So if I want to create, uh, I, I mean, what exactly, I remember right where you were, and I said, oh, the voice first, or almost in my, now the, re, the, the risk sometimes, if the voice beats, the, you may not be able to predict which way they turn. But that, 
would have been my cast. And you went, wow. And it doesn't feel like much difference, but to the dog, it was more influenced by this than by this. And that's why I think she got almost a right over. Rearward momentum. So if you're driving that four-wheeler and you hit a money spot, you start to lose momentum, you're probably going to hit the gas pedal. That's the verbal box. If you need to direct it left or right, you're using the, the steering wheel. That's the silent. So if you just kind of, you can kind of instinctually start to feel that. And when you do this enough, 38 years of it, and you know, running hundreds and hundreds and thousands of lines, it's like driving a stick shift vehicle that you really know. You just you don't have to think about when to push the clutch, when to let off the clutch, when to hit the accelerator, when to shift. It becomes just second nature. So as you start to speak dog and speak blind, you'll start to. So I encourage you to play with it a little bit, you know. And that's why people that never use verbals or never use silence because. A verbal cast makes silent cast more powerful, and a silent cast makes a verbal cast. There's a distinction in the two. The hand versus no hand. The firm send versus the soft send. It creates more, a greater, more in-depth language. So I encourage you to experiment with the use of these things and the combination of where they interact with each other because it'll make you a more sophisticated handler, and, and you'd be amazed how... how they can really understand some of these more subtle things. But you have to start to play with it. And if you, you know, some people, they have, you get nothing but silent cast. So the silent cast does not become profound. It's just what you do every time. But if you if you mix it up with, with other ones, then they become, oh, that means something different. Can I ask a question? So sometimes, I like to use voice sometimes. Uh -huh. But I find if I go against somebody, they don't sometimes with the silent cast. And does it move, freezes? Right. Yeah, um, dogs. We had a dog yesterday, uh, yesterday that was freezing on some silent cast. And there's a lot of different reasons that that may happen. They may not be able to see you very well. They may be apprehensive or belligerent about where you're asking them to go. And they may. I don't want to go there. I don't want to get in trouble for going where I want to go. So I'm just going to sit here and see what happens. There are, you know, it is not an uncommon thing, and I call it freezing on a cast. So I will go back and review some pile work, and I'll force off of the silent cast, and I'll explain that this means go just like that or anything else. And so sometimes it's a process you got to work through, and it's not uncommon to have to go through that. But uh, uh, and, and it isn't, and, and a lot of times you give the silent because that's what you really want, and then you're forced to give a verbal because they will move, and you say, you know what, I don't like that, so I got to work on. Okay. All right, Carolyn. What are we going to do? Three and four. Three and four coming up. Heel. Here. Heel. 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 Carol did a nice job of getting out of a poor start, right? And she had this little sport here and sport there. And, huh? Right. And he squirted off to the right and he cast left. And then that verbal right hand back really kind of restarted him. And, you know, after that, it was a respectable blind.
it over her shoulder so she looks like she's trying to force him. Ah, I did put a nip to that. Yeah, he did it a couple three times. It was a tricky depth perception, isn't it? Yeah. So that kind of peaking and four starts, is that that's kind of that's not uncommon with him? Correct. And what kind of things have you done to try to just I review force of the foul, I I let him take a line of Yeah, even off. if it isn't perfect to kind of encourage. Just to get him going. Encourage momentum. If you do like known blinds or tune up your own, does he and he has an idea that out there? Is he better about it? I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, if I do walking around blinds and he he's makes, like, yeah, gotcha. Okay. On my home grounds, he does better. Yeah. yeah. Okay, dokie. Thank you. We're gonna try three and four. All right. Well, let Carol go ahead and get out of the way, and so she doesn't Just catch them underneath the bird rack or something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. You're okay with her standing up on whistles? Is that no? Okay. Yeah, okay. That's something I'm working on. But okay. She, some days is better than others. If you and so if you addressed it, would it upset her if she get flaky? If you blew a whistle and nicked her for not sitting, would it, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just going to ask it. She'll probably be okay. She doesn't, she's a pretty sensitive dog. So okay. she could basically take a one. Okay. Her, so All right. I have to kind of pick and choose my battles with it. Okay. Yeah. Sit. Sit. I've certainly had plenty of work that. You know, there's nothing more wonderful than a sensitive dog with good desire. I mean, they're easy to maintain. You don't have to have a lot of fights. You don't have to correct a lot because, you know, it's not fun. But you do have to, you know, you have to also keep them kind of conditioned to pressure to some degree because you can't just be afraid to correct them either. Right. So, you know, finding that middle ground where, um, they they understand and function through stress, but they don't need much stress. Okay. Oh, sure. Awesome. Thank you. 
You're trying to bribe me so you don't put you on the back station on the next day. Well, you said you are done with me. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just wanted you to have a break. So hang up. I appreciate that. Okay. What are we doing? Okay, so we're going to try to recover from our, our, our epic. So what is appropriate? Um, I would, would like to actually think I might try the shortest one. Okay, so we, and, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. And the next one, yep. because um, I'm not sure how he'll fare after our troubles this morning. You bet, okay. So if you don't mind. No, I don't I feel mind. Like a we need to plant number one. Basic elementary. Yes, yeah, I agree. I, right. I was thinking, when I put that out, I was thinking, like, hey, we need to keep now. I would. Um, I just want to try to be successful with yep, him. I totally agree. And help him out, and then see what happens. Now, let me ask you a question. Is it, I mean, well, I mean, even the next option of simplicity would be to let him on the plan. It would be, but I think I'd like to try it. Right. And exactly. if I have to make him sit and then move up, I could do that, right? Absolutely. Okay. And then if he's successful with that. Oh, look at that. She's. Yes. Yeah, she's. Oh, yeah. look at her. She's. Yeah. She knows enough not to um, go straight at the bar. Yeah. 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 And then That'd maybe. And then maybe the one next to it, I would try. Yeah. Because no, I no, think. That's a, I was thinking of that as a, you know, senior, light senior level. Yep. Yeah. And then maybe he would. That would also be suctioned to that old. Uh, yeah, and that, and specifically to signal plant that. Sometimes that short line gets them as far as the short line for the next one, and then you just kind of got to work your way through it. Thank you. That was impressive. <laughs> Heel. We're going to get dead bird. <laughs> Heel. We're going to get dead bird. The impressive part, you knew enough not to yeah. walk straight at it so it didn't trail like the blind. <laughs> Over. Get this other blind in them because that question has come up. Okay. And I'll talk about it. The first part is a consistent set. We'll get another one. We were a good boy. Okay. Good boy, come here. And when I say consistent set, is when you blow the whistle, they put the butt on the right. You don't have to convince them where you're going. You just got to get them. Back. So far, so good. Over. Okay. Over. Oh, boy. Good. Okay, so the crooked sit. Um, I'm going to do a brief explanation when I come back, but um, my first step in that is to just have a 12-foot lead on them, set them down, move a little bit so they're strong, and dip and say sit, 
and tug them and he straighten them up and move again. Sit, tug them, and teach them when you do this, it means to square up, okay? And then I'll do it again, and I'll keep going in a circle. And I'll say sit, and I'll dip, and I'll even low neck on the collar to teach them that when they're like this, and I, and I dip, it means to straighten up. Okay, so once I've kind of taught them that, you did it. And initially, I'm going to just give them a jerk on the leaf, just to kind of, and I jerk them and I say sit. So like if I, like if he was right there, i do it like this. See what I mean? I've created a crooked sit, right? And so I would turn and I'd go and I'd, and I'd say sit and I'd dip and I'd say sit. I'd give him a little jerk with the lead and I'd square him up. And you'll see what they'll start to do to avoid the jerk is you dip and they'll straighten up. You dip, you, you just so bow, bow a little bit, okay? okay. And then I teach them to bow with the light nick. And then I'll do some pile work. Well, I know the pile. And if they sit crooked, I bow and I say sit and I nick. And then I end up, then they'll find that to avoid the nick, they'll start to square up. So I'll do it in a yard atmosphere. I'll enforce it with some pressure with the lead and then collar because I want to teach them what that means. I'll do some pile work like a, t, like a double T pile leg. And then my last step is usually to do bird boy blinds, where you walk around and you do multiple blinds, so you get lots of whistle stops. And when it comes up, you bow and you say, or you can, some, some people can go with a light tweet tweet and bend, but well, ideally, what you can do is you time it when you're doing it, and they turn, and you can tell they're going to, they haven't really sat yet, but they're still crooked, you can, you can bow right there, here with a little nick, and then you'll teach them, and then they'll learn, like, this means... When they do that, I got to sit square to you. But you got to go through the process of kind of showing them how to square up, reinforcing squaring up, then reinforce it on on a on pile work, lining on, on stops, and then take it to a transitionary field drill, which is bird boy blind, and then use that protocol in the field on normal training. That's the procedure I, I, I would recommend. Okay. All right. I got a success out of that. Yeah. Quite so bad. Well, you know yeah. what? Both times he went with good. And you were saying back in route because you, I guess I you thought he was, was going to turn around. I thought he was going to pop. Yeah, I thought he but was going to pop. Good. Here. Very nice. Come on, grass eater. All right. What are we going to do? Um, I think we're going to go 3 4. 3 4. All right. Have at it. See what happens. That's why we're here. Right? Move back. Okay. He said, you ran? Thank you. 
Well, she and mom. Oh, okay. But at some point, you'll start to wing yourself off of these. Because he's he's pretty dialed in to looking for the blind at the end, and, uh, which is it gets you there, but it could also get you in trouble, you know, when he. I think he sees the outline of the pole, but he's certainly looking for a visible end. Okay. And so, um, Sit. I don't mind it, but I mean, I would, I would start to wean him into, like, you get to a place where you've got boundary markers where there's five of those poles out there. My guess is he'd have trouble, like, wait a minute, I see a pole, I think there's a bumper there. Right. So, I agree with that. No. Uh, so I would start to, I mean, I love this momentum and, I mean, he's really attractive and I wouldn't necessarily just, but I'd start to do blinds where there aren't obvious so just markers. just remove the poles completely? Yeah, well, um, you know what I'll get? I mean, we have done that. He's done them without, you know, without poles. I just don't ask him to go that far. I guess, and I think it's a good way to, I mean, I, I like what it's done. I'm just saying, all right, the, the possible downside of that is when he gets toward the end of the barn, he's not waiting for you to tell him what to do. He's, he's looking, looking for, like, where's okay. that? Oh, right. And he's going to start to become, I think, trouble to stop. And they start don't, they're not in he has been trouble right. <laughs> but, but I love the fact that he, go, he went hard with lots of style. It was funny. You sit back and he was like, he had to do it in stages. His head started to go, then his shoulders, and they were shoot. Well, and that's, be that's because I gave him a, um, a correction uh, for because he was he scalped on me, so I gave him a close correction. So we're still working through that little bit, the first 20 feet. But yeah, <laughs> thank you. Is that Gabby or Leo? It looks like both of them. I know. That's what I'm looking like. My wife would be all over that. Is that Gabby or Leo? <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to try, I do want to do the decoy one here in the middle, but yeah. I want to try the l left one only to see if we get that same freezing thing. Oh, yeah, we you stop? Need to do three and four. After yeah. Is this our last one? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's somewhere out of order, so I don't know. Yeah, you're last. Yeah, I'm last. All right. Good. Yep. Well, we, met, we, did. we did good here. We will take about, we're yeah. going to relocate, take about a 30 minute chance to eat lunch and air your dog. Yeah. Yep. We'll get out of it again. I agreed with the cat. I thought it was perfect. You know, not the voice first. It's just right there. Probably, especially because you because you drew them in. Ah! See, when you when you well, oh, probably because you called them in ten yards and you killed the real and momentum. Back. There you go. No freezing, no popping. No. Let's see if we get it over here. Here, here. So we're gonna. As soon as this is done, we're done with all this equipment. I mean, we can just relocate it or just put it on your trailers or whatever. But remember, our next line is right up by the. The decoys on top of the hill are pintail decoys. That's where we're gonna be running from here up there.
was a timely uh, after a discussion, wasn't it? <laughs> was that not enough cash or was that a scallop? Well, no more yet. That baby shot straight up. Feels like a real straight up style. It would be funny. Good. Do the same thing with the left. Ah. It's a lot better than his roommates. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. That was good. That's our uh, oh, call back. Everybody's call back. <laughs> Soon enough. Don't be crying now. <laughs> well, he's kind of. Let's see if he remembers the bird. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. this bird you could get too watery on and miss it on the upward side. Or you could get cheaty and be kind of a bad boy. I'm not speaking. I don't hurt people who are hurtful. Stop them. Let's hand them into the bird. And this is the bird. Yeah. I'm going to be sitting down. But then, yeah. See, I may do this, but still. Here! I mean, I thought about doing the two outsiders. It's a lot of interesting stuff. You said that I want to do that. And I threw that bird in there because it's a tip. If they get out early, if they get out, even if they give you a reason for it. I can't give you a spot on the shore that I think is legal. You just got to read their intent. Right? They've got to just give you some effort to angle. They can't just touch the water and dive for the bank. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Actually, we did that mostly because there were some hot ones. There were some little 
But I actually kind of liked it. Cause <coughs> throwing birds across obstacles. Sun on one side, bird on the other. Island birds, bridge birds, birds thrown across ditches, birds thrown from one side. Now, I, I'm not going to make them go through the decoys, but they got at least... Yeah. It's not that hard to get through there. I mean, it's just... <laughs> but it, I know, it looks... When I watched, Rick just walked through there himself, and I thought, oh, okay, that's not like... It's not like a deep mud. Now this is what's going to make you feel better about doing this blind after they you corrected them on this mark. Now you're going to say, "All right, big boy, give me some water for a minute." And that's, that's you know the reason to finish with the greatest commitment. You know you just you had some cheat issues here. Now you say, "Get in and stay in." Thinking I'm going to move that over here and make this. Make that left yep. hand bird a little bit yeah. more obvious. Sit. Feels like the right thing to do. Sit. Especially yeah. with all that lunge right on the edge. Mm -hmm. Are you? Sit. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> Heel. Heel. Sit. Not as cold as some of these kids. We're going to be tomorrow. <laughs> I'm Stop it. Ah! Ooh. It's not too late. We can still grab the keys and make room for it. afraid to move over here to handle because if they, you know, you're going to get up real high in this point, you're not going to see them if they dart left to the right. You're going to want to come off the left, at, I would say like in 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Ginger can't get up there. Oh, my Back, I know. Go but back. voice <laughs> Yeah. Oh well, no, you wanted a right hand voice. Because you didn't want to drop cat cast him in behind the point and then show up. Yeah. He, he did the right thing. <laughs> yeah, but the if you went and left the, the, the right hand voice was appropriate. That's the with the wind cast. I mean, with a point like that, that is so high, yeah. and you've got so much lack of visibility, when I say, I mean, if I'm running that blind in field trail, or in a hunt test, or whatever, I'm going to I'm gonna um, get up near where those yellow flowers are, and get a cast towards the Nichols house, and at least saw it, and then I'm going to, because what you got to guard against is them doing this and wrapping around, and then they can't see them. 
and they show up and to the right. So it's just one of those you got to be pretty defensive on. But I put myself out at trials by giving a voice there and wrapping them into a code when I didn't want to. Which, the, with the left hand or the right hand? I can't remember, but it'd be I the, remember it'd it'd be the, the nightmare. Uh, okay, this is what they say. Uh, the old school would be, if you go back off the point, it takes you back to the hotel. If you go over, it takes you to the next series. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, old school that the pros would say. Back to the hotel, over to the next series. So, my yeah. My decision was good. I yeah, yeah. Really you went good. like this, and you did kick a verbal, and then on the back end, he, but he was coming off pretty good. Okay. But my, my cast, most of the time, when I'm on that point, there's two things I'm going to do. My first cast Sit. is probably going to be silent. Yeah. For two reasons. Sit. Because if I give a silent cast, I can have the whistle. Sit. My whistle's going to be in my mouth, right? And yeah? Yes, sir. Because <laughs> we talked about this yesterday. And I'm, I'm not only going to have the whistle, because you, this point is only from here to the other side of my chair, so you don't have much room then. So the dog gets up on that point, and you're probably going to be a little right of those yellow flowers. Probably. There's a little spot that looks mowed where it looks a little scorched, slightly right of the line of the blind. Yeah. I think most dogs that get out are going to be right about there. So the minute they get up and they touch the green, I'm going to stop. I'm going to inhale. After I've stopped them, I'm going to have the whistle loaded. In other words, I've got all the pressure built up, and I'm going to give this cast, and any any dip of the right shoulder, I'm going to blow again immediately. Dip of the right and I've got to blow a lot. I, can, I can even, can't even give them a full dog length. And if it's really hard, I'm going to say, I'm going to blow two whistles no matter what. It may be beep, inhale, cast, beep, and then the, the next one. I mean, that's the oh shit, you better behave whistle. So that's kind of that real defensive end. You're not, listen, I've never lost a trial by blowing that whistle, but I've lost a lot by not blowing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, One we have two lonely. So, but I'm saying, this is where, I, and I caught you yesterday, she'd blow, she'd take the whistle out of her yeah. mouth and give a silent cast. I said, the time it takes you to stick the whistle back in your mouth, inhale and blow, they're over the backside, around the corner, Gone. it's game over. Now, With listen guys, I mean, I, I want you to do the point thing and come off, but if it's like way over your dog's head, come over here and run the blind and go by the point. You're gonna get, that's gonna be okay too. Thank but you. that's a good lesson there, and that's a good challenge, and it's gonna make you guys be on the ball. So, and there's nothing wrong with doing single, single, single. Don't. The reason I moved this line to here to make this left hand bird a little more obvious water. Okay? I saw where that running water was and they're like one quarter step and they're lunging and now they're not stopping. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do this single and the water. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Rick. Single on Rick. I might even do that as a single right. with Wolf.
If Miss Undisciplined, how about her return? May decide that. Get in! Get in the water! Get in. <laughs> single then the middle single. Yeah, Bill is going to, what we're going to do, yeah, go ahead and pick that bird up. Okay, we're going to do yours first and then Bill's. So the only station that doesn't have a duck call is our middle station, and it's probably the one that's the hardest to see. Can we give, should we give him something? And I'd like to get him a duck call, and I'd like to take some stringer tape and take that bird up. Because you only get to see Let's go ahead and this dog. And I think doing his right hand single and making her go for the one. I don't think that, I'm not sure what the other day, what she did there, she just did her self-selecting, but I turned into self-selecting and self-cheating. So let's do this. Watermarks and you do them as cheating services. 
there. Most dogs are going to cheat. I'm just pitch it on the ground and we'll pick it up after you. Okay. <laughs> you know, just don't forget the first part of all water bites is 
commitment to get in the water and be willing to swim across. That's, that is, without a doubt, priority one. Talk to me. I'm everybody. I said that priority one is to jump, get in the water and be willing to swim across. That's that's the only thing you're trying to Back. convey at this point. She's doing all I'm going to have to do. <laughs> we'll see. they're in, they better stay in. And even if I have to, this isn't about the line anymore. This is she have? Well, she's got something. Oh my god, if it's one of those snakes, I'm going to die. I have snake phobia. I wouldn't think so either. It looks like a... Is it a... Is at the end of a cord of a bumper? I don't know. The suspense is killing me. It's all the snakes that were... Maybe she cut it, yeah, baby goose. <laughs> no, quit digging at me. Stop. Just wait. I mean, if, you, if it's a bird or something, then you just say, well, we scored you to the off the point. You got off the point. I mean, there's no reason to try to reach it. Lovely. It's a green or something. It's a little tiny. Oh, yeah. yeah. She did her job, <laughs> the girl. Yeah, she okay, so what do you do? What do you do? You're judging it. Oh, you're you judging it. It's, you no, give it to judging, him. and that happened just now. What do you, you do? Get, you give it to him because there was a bird out there that the judge or whoever Don't checked it out didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. What is it? It's a baby goose. Is it alive still? Oh, is it a goose? Baby. Oh, yeah, it is a baby goose. Was it alive or no? Not anymore. Stop. Yeah, it is. The guy's like, no. Okay. 
Where did the dog get it? Out of the nest. Nice. No, no, but where did... <laughs> the person who was checking for snakes didn't see that. Is it? Oh and maybe it just it's died and it was like, oh, go back to the hotel. So <laughs> well, I'm going home. All right, so. Hey, she picked up the oh, bird. Oh, I, I do want to make yeah. that. I say she, she did a job. Yeah, you can't. Well, you can't. You scored a report of interference. You don't know when in the interference was. Right. right. And rerunning a dog like that if they found a bird is really not fair. No. Right. No. You give it to me. Now, in all honesty, I want to make I want to make one little adjustment to Bill's station. Okay, Bill. I want you to cock the winger just a little bit further to the front. Is that with him, Marcy, his wife. Marcy. Marcy, can you hear me on the radio out there? Before you come in, Marcy, I want you to drive around to the other side, and I want him to just aim the winger to where I want you to stand. We changed the line a little bit. I want to change it. I think of all the crazy things that I've seen happen. Um, I watch a dog come back with a wild turkey. Wow. And wild turkey live. Wow. I mean, That's off the nest, snatched it on set of marks. Off the nest? Wow. That's crazy. So they scored it to the area. National Amateur. Minnesota. Come here. Dog gets up like that. Come, gets into the car and picks up a bumper. Sit. Was it on the Sit. back side of that site, kind of where like Link broke down? Is that where that dead bird was? No, but or Link was it broke. in the water? I don't know. Okay, stop right there, Marcy. Stop right there. Tell I'm her to stop. I'm just curious where, where, where. Have her get off the bike and walk a little bit. Walk to your left, Marcy. Right in there. Let's launch. Let's have the launcher point that direction. Is it just a slight that angle change? Okay, go ahead and launch. You don't want to get it. Has to go forward. You know what? I'm okay with that. It actually is kind of interesting with it being in the cover a little bit. That was a little shorter. Can you drop the legs a little bit so it's slightly, can but goes slightly the longer? But I like that. For whatever reason, that's really cool. Okay. 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 Just drop the legs. Kevin, they need the, need the element of the sticks at the stick punch. Our rip. I want to drop your legs a little bit. Just a, okay. so your bird goes. A little lower together. Yeah. Can we see it? Okay, good. Then you are, you read my mind. So that national in Minnesota, the dog picks up the bumper. They had run, I don't know, seventh, eighth series. So they probably had thirty. They probably run fifteen or eighteen of the thirty dogs. And they had a field. They had a committee meeting, and they decided to put the bumper back out. Now, the dogs didn't smell the bumper from the pond. It was a dog that cheated and got out a little bit early. They wouldn't have been failure blinds if they could have finished it. What a, like six dogs picked up the bumper. They were, they were kind of a crazy call, really. She didn't know right where he got it. There was a big wall of cattails there, though, and the dog kind of went into cattails, and you were expecting it to pop out and finish the line, and he comes out with a bird. Deep into his national, you run the majority of the dogs. wins this year's national goes into the holding blind on the night series tries to get birds out of the bird bag at the night the, the test was annihilating did you know this uh Dania? Fox? no not fox it was a uh, deep al arthur oh, no. my good friend of mine was in the blind and they had they had made a two partition blind because of covid and they wanted the gunner and the thrower to be in different sections but when he got out there, they were both in the same, and the birds were in the other one. And they were just right next to each other. But it was a long mark. And the dog came in the holy Bible, was, was trying to get the birds out of the bird bag. And the gunner shoot him out. Get out of here, get out of here. And the dog went out, and he came back again. Did it again. The dog came out and popped. The, gun, the guy handled. 
They went out and talked to the gunners. They called gunner interference. They ignored the pop and the handle. Dog wins the national. Oh, wow. Win the national championship on that interference call. Wow. What a But what do you judge? I mean, anything can happen. I mean, like right there, I'm thinking like, what do you do? You got to make a decision. I think that would, if you, and I get, you know, I can't blame those judges at the national. I mean, it was an unfortunate, probably the real screw up was they were going to do a partition blind. They better have somebody sitting next to the bird bag. Somebody didn't know them. And uh, anytime you, you, you side on the dog side. I know, I, there, you can't go wrong. I would score that dog. Now, I don't think the dog, I don't think what happened on the point had anything to do, I don't think the bird interference, I would have scored the bird interference when I saw the dog again, because I think that's when she probably picked it up. Yeah. But she picked it up like it was floating out in the pond, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. it was weird. Like, like well, I wonder. Nobody could tell where she actually You know, if there was a nest right there, there'd be, but, well, again, if it's a nest, they're already hatched, so it's not like she's sitting on the eggs. No. I see geese down in that far end. It was something dead from a first She just got. Might have been under the water. Might have been floating real low, and the dog just, so. But there's no way you could rerun that dog. But if you did rerun them. Everything it did up to the point that it picked up the bird has already been scored. You only score from there on, but it would be so unfair because she's found a bird there. So, and if you couldn't get her out of there, like it's not like every dog had a bird they found right. there. So you'd have to, you'd have to cook. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't know if that. Could. Go ahead. If you want to launch it, please do. That looks awesome. That's like the perfect bird. Just into the rough, white ribbon. First as a single. Okay. Then I'm coming back and I'm thinking I'm going to do a double. Yeah. But every what I've seen for the first dog is that that was the memory bird or that was the go bird and that was the memory bird. What are your thoughts of swapping Switching that? Over. What what pitfalls do you see by swapping that? What? I guess I don't see any. I mean, they're oh. not. To be honest with you, they're almost equidistant. Right. I went out because I went out there and I thought, oh, these are like straight across from each other. I know that's the more. My instinct, but that's the more. Okay with it. That's the more difficult. Right. But, so you but get what I'm. The more difficult bird, the first bird retrieved, and a little cleaner. Right, but what I'm also thinking because of his habits that pop up once in a while, of uh, trying to go, you know, think he's going there and then he goes for the other one. Is that this one's going to be more straightforward on the right? So if he has to have that as the memory bird, he's got to go straight okay. after that. Okay. Well, so I could I mean, get I'm some not, correction if he like, was. Oh boy, that's a great idea. But, I, but I, I'm listening to you talk. I could, I could go with that. I'm just thinking to you know sim simplify it a little bit because there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think that's I mean, that's that. Not win that bird. Right. Um, now the risk is they come up here. Starts around that side, and then that gun is pretty obvious on the right. Right. I mean, there could be a switch right. temptation there, but which is what he try, what he has to stop. That. Right. I, he needs I to be not, corrected for that. I would not let him get the right hand. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, Rick Sickle. Rick Sickle. Okay. Yeah. Well, this will take the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's what it's supposed to be. What else do we have? Yep. That's right. On a sunny day. Okay, come on up. Sit. I'm sorry.
50. Hi, Cole. That's a little cleaner bird. Mm -hmm. There you go, you're going, Cole. Oh, you can ask for. Don't worry too much about what he does when he gets out. Because the, there's really, the, the bird d did splash, but it's literally right there. So it's not like a re-entry. If we'd have thrown it on the dike further out, that would have been, but the bird is right there. Good. Okay, we're going to change this up just a little bit. We're going to do Jake 1, Bill 2. Jake 1, Bill 2. fire ants up here.
I, I had the same thought, but that mine has got to go. And he had a pretty good cast. Yeah. So maybe not. Mm -hmm. Second thought, she'd have been better off handling on my I think it's I get anywhere past that little bush 
the little one on the right of him, I'm satisfied with that. So my cheating single story I'm going to tell you is uh, our routine at Hanjum at, at Larry's camp in the fall. I'm not sure he gets it. Looks like he's pretty much nailed it. Um, would be to run a trial. This would be like late October. We're bearing down on the national championship, trying to qualify some dogs. And we would break camp in Wisconsin. And we'd go to Kentucky and run a field trial. Go to Bristol, Tennessee and train. Go to Wilmington, North Carolina, to John Thomas's property at the time, and run a field trial. Train there a week and go to Easton, Maryland, and then back to Wisconsin and then on to the National. So we go to John Thomas's after running two trials. And we've got a full day drive on Thursday. So all we do Thursday, Wednesday afternoon are three cheating singles. And mind you, we've got 18 all-age dogs on the truck. 14 of them are probably field champions and pretty darn good seasoned dogs. And we do three cheating singles. And 90% of them are idiots. Idiots. Cheating like, like, wait a minute. You're five, six years old, been trained all year, and you're cheating like jerks. And they all got, and they got in trouble, and it was like race thinking, like, oh, man. Well, we pack up the truck, we drive to Eastern Maryland, and we get first, second, and fourth in the open with those dogs. Qualified okay. two dogs. Next year, we make the same trip. We said, what are we going to do on Wednesday? I said, we're doing, I don't care what it is, we're doing the same three cheating singles. We won again that year. But these dogs were non-retired guns, not that complicated, but they were just so cheating singles were the perfect thing. We didn't do a quad with two retired guns. We did three. This is a single on Jake. Single Jake, I'm sorry. I'm not sure that's told you. Exact opposite of these. So the tail end of it. And the, the lack of discipline from running a lot of field trials at the end of the roads, it started to erode their, 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 their water ethics. And it was perfect. It was something uncomplicated and straightforward. And it was exactly what they needed. Here we're doing something, I wouldn't say it's uncomplicated, but it's still three singles are straightforward with good standards. You can never go wrong with it. Okay, Bill will be next. And I'll tell you, when we did the same three cheating singles the next year, they did the same thing. <laughs> Almost identical. really make this harder, you put the right hand bird behind that bush that he's about to line with now, deeper, and throw to the left. And the dog that skirted would have, you know, then you would have had that.
better win this argument before we get out of the way. when you needed to be. Very good. All right, so when we get down to some of these younger dogs, guys, remember, you can change the lines, you can skip the blind, you can run the blind.
standing on the point trying to handle it. <laughs> he Um, he has to have singles for sure. Sure. We're gonna try to make. Then we should probably start with further ones. Okay. Yeah. He, what he, is his? He, uh, how is he around the water? Is he cheaty? Is he okay? Is he? It depends. 
I'd like to move up some because I think yeah. that he'll go through. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I help me out with. Um, we'll try to prevent it from uh, now degrading. Okay, when we get to the blind, or if we're going to do the blind, one option to do would be to have Rick walk down, let him see him plant a bumper into the edge of the water. Okay. And you do kind of a show me one. Somewhere in the green where we have a target, then we're on, and then just do it. I think we do the right hand bird first. Uh, Jake, we're going to do you first. Yeah, you're right. I see her. I gotta tell you, 
tell you a funny story about the first really big money letter. You went for stupid money. Uh, the names they named all these Labradors were hilarious. And this cost a lot. Getting in and starting across is probably going to be. <laughs> yeah, and he kind of like he didn't swim, but he didn't jump out. So I thought, you know what, that's probably. Oh, so now it's really. Yeah, can you actually put it in the water itself? Can you lay it right at like crosswise so it'll be real obvious for us? That's perfect, perfect. Huh? No, that's what Yeah, just why don't you walk that way? Just just hang out. Like go down down no the blind's good. The blind's good! Yay! The blind is good! Maybe just walk that way. Instead of and then maybe just sit on it hang out on the ground.
She was from Cleveland, too. Her name was Mary Faville. She got into this game. She had show cats. <laughs> but she ended up having some pretty good dogs, and she went and And when they talked about being mean, given, so she actually moved to Illinois. But And at the club banquet, she got the little trophy that said she had the bitchiest over award. <laughs> <laughs> Mary go, oh, ah! So then they gave her a little trophy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, you might want to tell her about the silent movement you talked to me about. Did she move a lot, the wrong way? Yeah. Well, she when the dog in, when the dog was looking at her, she, she did, and then right. Okay. You talked good. to me a good lot point. about We had a lot talking about that. So Christine, one comment. One of the biggest things in handling is reducing what I call false motion. False motion is the dog seeing you do something that you're not really intending to communicate. And Daniel picked up on it because I yelled at her yesterday about it. Yeah. She would blow, and yeah. she's intending to give this cat. But she would do this. She'd blow, and she'd go. She would, and she'd do it to shift. She would want to push off the one way. I'm exaggerating. No, but it's, it's but, true. But you know, you, people will blow. They know they're going to give this, right? But their weight isn't such. So the dog's looking at them, and they go beep, and they go, and they dip this way, and then cast this way. Well, the dog's looking for any excuse not. They want to go that way, because that's where the land is. So you want to, you just want to take that kind of sloppiness out of your game. Okay. I, I don't know if your, your guy or uh, Bill uh, Schrader would say this, but Rex would say this who was kind of the teacher of the guy that mentored Danielle a little bit. The first thing to do is take your errors out of the game. They're only going to be as good as you are. Did he say that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first thing is to take your errors. If you're going to be sloppy, they're going to be sloppy. Period. So take as much as I can do. Well, thanks. Okay. That was fun. Yeah, it is fun. I was pleased that he And I never get tired of doing that. And, I, and that's where they are to bird placement is, where the group the bird itself does the teaching for you. Island bird, bridge bird, the birds in the here. water, birds thrown across the obstacles. Here. Here. All good. Scarlet, here. Okay, what are we going to do? It's going to do singles, left to right. Left to right. Rick, here. single, Rick. Here. Here. I know we're cutting into your own drinking time here by talking to so. <laughs> <laughs> but this is good stuff, and it's a beautiful day.
100. They get to those early, like the first set of watermarks in a national where you got a hundred dollars to do a set of watermarks. Well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do something like this quick. Sure. Well, there's a little swim, just a little corner. You try to get a test that's going to take seven minutes. No, put your foot up. There, that's good. That's still. Okay, Bill. Middle bird, Bill. This dog, since I've started handling, I'm going to make make sure she goes through the cup, through, you know, into that bottle. Keep going. 
left. Oh, God. Oh, made a made of wire. It feels a little bit like a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> I said her tail, her wagon tail is a little bit like a middle finger. <laughs> just watching her kind of like, she's just like, here, come on. You think you're in control of that, but you're really not. Look at this, she's oh. like, oh. I'm going to hold it till I'm going to spit it out right at your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jake. She's gonna cheat something. Forty four. Stand up and a little holler, Jake. Hurry, hurry, holler a little louder. At this point, we got a lesson taking the water, but she's. What level was that on the towel? Huh? One. <laughs> you know, when you get these guys that are. They're sensitive, but they're also kind of passive aggressive. And she's got a little she's stubborn in a, in a, in a, in a, in a oh. I have one of those at home, passive yeah. aggressive dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how, talk to me about this barn. What, do we go by the point? Can we do it? Do we need to do a show me? Do we need to move up? I'm going to go a little bit. Okay. I just don't know what is it, what her, uh, does she come in a white jacket?
we're going past the point. We're not going to go over it. Yeah. No. That's over in the next series. Even though you're not really going to. She needs to swim. Swim. She wants to get on the point. Or if she gets in at all. We'll, we'll see. Huh? Did she need your review? She's only been in water once this year and it was really cool. To me, she's like, yeah, she needs a little. If she's capable of doing this, like she showed at the end. Because you send her kind Sit. of standing up, and when you send her, Sit. you're you're asking Sit. her to go. You're not telling her to go. In my opinion, Sit. you're saying you're you're asking her to go on board. You send her standing up, and you and you send her real softly. You don't tell her she's got a job to do. You're saying please go. In my that's what it feels like. Good. You don't say Sit, dead bird, back. Give her a command, not a request. Tell her she's got a job to do. Make her do it, and reward her when she does it. Because she's not as worried as she wants you to think she's. My, that's my opinion.
most of the handles I do are in route to the ball and things like that. She wasn't quite there yet. Two, two, two. And okay, good. Now we should move a little bit more to the left here. Make this a little cleaner. You move wherever you think is the fairest. I think that's the smart thing. Skip the blind and do your feet here. The mark. Did you make any color corrections there? Was that all true?
Don't you think, Carol? That, don't you think we should redraw that? Yeah. There was something funny about it. he just he saw that like it coming down, and I thought we were okay, but I don't know if he's redrawn yet. He's not. Doesn't do anything about wingers. You know, he'd like to be able to have to stand up and redraw right away, make it clean, but there's the delay of. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, Rick will be next. Cannonball. That was good. Cannonball. Thank you. 
Do you want to go swim in? Can we get that gaze? Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Just thinking exactly the same thing. He had all that trouble of uh, willing himself across, and now he's doing it so nicely. It feels like the right thing to do is just let him swim across the pond and pick up the line. It's still good enough. I, I tend to agree with that. Here. Here. That's a good boy. gets up there and sees the water and breaks right, that's really where the blind is, and you don't really want that to be the case. victim we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do singles yes. and so we've been working we've been working hard on that oh okay um just to give you a little background okay all right all right come on. sit okay stay
Yeah, that's like great. Stop and I'd like to cast them. So I think, well, let's, we'll see. But my first instinct, most of the time, I want to practice the mechanics of handling a cheating signal and then casting it. No, I think he did the right thing. I thought you were fine. I mean, he did definitely did deviate to the right enough for you to say. Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. Let him hey, hey, a little bit. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Hey, Dad, what up? I think he's looking for a meatball sandwich. <laughs> he smells the marinara sauce in your finger. <laughs> yes, I think this yeah. is about the best part. Sit. Oh boy. different deal than what we had the first time. But now, now that he casts through the cover, I want the gun to, I, I want to let him hunt it out. And we're going to repeat that mark. Very much like the other one. We could get more out of repeating that mark than doing the water mark. Okay, help again. Before the buzzards come get the birds. Hurry up before the buzzards get it. Yeah, the buzzards are going to get it. I know, they're like sniffing around already. Sit. You get in that kennel. Sit.
Did he have an extra bird out in the field? Okay. Did he throw a second bird? Or was that from before? I wasn't up here soon enough. I don't know. Did he throw a second bird? I can't oh, remember. Oh, you know what? That was Carol. She's busy Carol. writing stuff down. Good girl. You want to check the collar before you get started again? What do you, uh, you got one of the, okay, one of the, uh, Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sixteen. We had to kind of punch our way through it as best we could. Now move to your left for the return, and let's try to emphasize he comes straight to you. He'll just pop out here in a second. He's going to probably try to run down the bank. Of the Just my the way my glasses were, I looked up. Move to the left and scroll up here, like you mean it. Tell him, Marcy, don't ask him. Don't do that, boy, till he's committed to swim. Okay. I mean, not obvious. Okay, one more dog left. He's, I, 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 
because he repeated he won't read the Bible. Never uh, seen Danielle. Yeah, he, yeah, no, he, he was like right at the edge. He never really deviated, but he was really skinny. I don't think he ever stopped on the whistle. I don't think he ever really heard. That's okay. Yeah, I know. I was like, uh, I'm not crazy about it, but, but he's acting kind of weird a little bit. See, his tail's a little tucked. He's acting a little. He doesn't like the fact that. He's not confident with those holding blinds. Well, we'll make sure the middle gut is up. Um, and then we get a look. Now, to some degree, we can't. Because where the winger is in comparison to where he is. And he just wanted to go to very good time. So, Bill, we're going to, because this dog has not had this hidden gun scenario, I'm going to have you step off into the clearing a little bit and make some motion so he sees you. And then we'll go back and shoot it. And then you'll step back out and be standing there. Does that make sense? So if you step out of the blind a little bit, on the other side, actually, the side that control is really high. We need to be over there. Let's go ahead and do that. And wave it out. All right, go ahead and shoot. Go ahead and get back and shoot it and launch it. And then step back out there after it hits. Step back out. And 50. So the thing to do is just do a little bit of that, have them step back, just kind of ease them into the hole. Oh, I guess this is no big thing. No, that was not a much better. Wait a minute. Let him make the decision when he comes out. Got a little bit of that. He's kind of got a creepy little hunt. He's still a little wiggy, acting a little wiggy. Yeah. So here's here's your. Uh, uh,
always on their phone. Are you going to the dinner thing? A lot of people yeah. are going. But he's acting like a lawyer here. Hurry out, turn around for a couple minutes. Hmm? I didn't hear you. Let him out here. Yeah, I'm going to pick up some stuff. Oh, yeah. Good. You're going to get plenty into the one casting right now. Okay, now, now go back to silence. I would have let them carry that one. left-handed cast, let them carry it a little bit. You work too hard to get those into the wind cast. I said, well, if you get the left-handed cast, let them carry it a little bit, like here. Because he's into the wind. Yeah, you enjoy that one a little bit. Okay, verbal right at that. That's right. All right. Well, that's a wrap for today, everybody. Thanks a lot.